Chris Dry, it's quite a lot of noises. Hello, welcome to High Rollers D&D, the uh, regular campaign here on the Yogg's Cast. That must be so creepy. What? Like, for everyone just tuning in, it's just like you whispering at the camera. <laughs> Chris Dry, it's quite noisy. Uh, so, <laughs> welcome. This is our regular D&D campaign we play here on uh, the Obscast Twitch. I am your Dungeon Master, as always, Mark Humes. Joining me, Chris, Trot, Katie, Hello. Tom, Hi. Kim. Hi. Hello. Uh, welcome. Uh, today, our adventures continue. But first, announcements. Take it away, Chris Trot. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> today... I've got many announcements to make. One is that this sweet hoodie, look at that. Wow, that's a nice health and relations hoodie. Turn around, Mark. Human resources. Human resources. Health, oh, health relations. he doesn't even know what it means. So you can get that oh, on store.yogscast.com. You buy spine. That was my spine. So <laughs> loud. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't everyone's spine make that noise? Where get, can you get Get that hoodies. on the fucking store. <laughs> what? Next. Store. Dot your I said it. You guys ignored me. Welcome. Dot your Welcome to making that um, Isn't it fun? I 62 is coming up at the end it's of March. Where is it? It's on fucking. Where, Chris Chalk, can I go to in Zombie 62? Birmingham NEC. What? <laughs> you can get the tickets on but the when? Insomnia website. When? It's the end of March, 20 what something. Day? I want a very specific what date. day? <laughs> Don't you do this. it? You do it to us every week. Every I'm not every that week. Bad. Yes, you are. I'm up. one guy. No, not you're not. three. Because no. I also have it from him. Yeah, that's true. If you would like to see us <laughs> at Insomnia 62, you can get a day pass. But the more special thing is in the evening, which is a separate ticket. You don't need to go to Insomnia to go to our High Rollers live show. That's right, you can see us five play a D&D game using these current characters potentially for the very last time. And it's going to be an awesome stage event. Please come along, please get tickets. To How much friends. are tickets, Chris Trot? 10 pounds. Yes, they are. 50 <laughs> pounds. <laughs> now 10 pounds. Well done. Welcome to doing the announcements. Isn't it fun? Uh, with that out of the way. I'd like to announce my departure from my rollers. <laughs> Woo! More money. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, with the announcements out of the way, so just in case you did miss all of that through our shouting at him, store.yogscast.com if you'd like to buy this new high rollers hoodie. Or more. And or more stuff. There's a t-shirt right. too. I think it's still 62. a sale on. There might still be a sale on. What's the actual date we for have an, Insomnia? We have a high rollers mug. Yeah, that's nice. We also have this mug. But we have a high rollers one. What's the actual date for Insomnia's? The live show, we will be there on the 31st. 31st. The actual show is from the 30th till the 2nd of April, but we will be there on the Saturday only. Yes. I won't because I'm working, but I will. these guys will only be there on the Saturday. Well, come Tom on Saturday, at least. will probably be there the whole weekend. Friday to Sunday. You're there with Oh no, you're not working now, are you? No. Woo! You're a special boy now. Oh, selling the merch. Boy. Yeah! That's to guarantee right. you to see us as High Rollers Saturday. <laughs> Saturday! 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 Can we do that episode? Yeah. Well, first a quick recap on last week's episode. Mm, yeah. uh, <laughs> it won't be as long as last week's recap because not as much stuff happened. That's um, true. But it was still it was a great early. episode. It was a great episode yeah. and you should watch it, which you can always, don't forget, you can always watch these straight afterwards on oh, Twitch. Where? There's on a reminder. On twitch.tv.com, <laughs> twitch.tv forward slash Yogscast. If you follow us on High Rollers, at High Rollers D&D on Twitter, that'll tell you everything. But our VODs now go up on Yogs Live on Thursdays. So if people are confused about where the VODs are, Thursdays is when they are uploaded now. So Thursdays can be quite the day for D&D. Yeah, so it's definitely. going to basically, you can watch your High Rollers VOD on YouTube. Yay. Then the Holly Conrad's going to be doing a new oh, show yeah. for Wizards. Oh yeah. And then it's and going then to be Critical Role well. straight afterwards that. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Who are they? Who are they? I'm Kim. I don't know anything. They sound rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> a great impression. I know, that's really good. <laughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> don't know I'm know hungry. This. Tom Hazel, I'm a master of impressions. Um, I want noodles. <laughs> so recap wise. Uh, the party, uh, having beaten the master vampire Karen Blackhearth and stopped his dark ambitions, took some time to wrap a few things up in Greybell. Um, they met the Bucklands, who are being now led by L.D. Buckland, a grandmother-like figure. Oh, yes. 
um, uh, who have now begun to get f uh, ready to leave the city and get back on the road. She grabbed my crotch. Uh, oh, yeah, she did. She did. Uh, Morella and Amelia, two I figures from Cam's yeah. past, were reunited. Um, and Cam had a few touching moments with his Buckland family. Elora and Juto discovered the fate of Libram and Testament, two <laughs> warriors from the Unbroken Empire that the party had aided and had and consequently aided the party back. Both had sadly died in a battle against undead creatures that they led away from the party, allowing them to reach Cam and help him defeat Karen much faster. Reynard returned the magical, powerful Black Hearth Blade to the Black Hearth Tomb and laid it to rest, hoping that a suitable leader may one day come to claim it. Juto had a brief moment with Reynard, um, speaking about her loneliness, seeing how uh, Cam was reunited with his family, but obviously her tragic backstory preventing such a reunion in her future. Don't tell everyone, she'll kill me. Um, Cam then used, the final thing we did was Cam used his divine magic to bring Libram and Testament back to life at the cost of a thousand GP. And I just want to make sure that that was crossed off, that, or that was, is at least not I've recorded. literally written here, accrue 4,000 worth of jewellery, 1,000 gold to bring Testament and Libram back to life. Cool, so you have 3,000 gold. Nice. Uh, yeah, from this town. Yes. Not in the bag of holding. Don't put it there. Um, it's with you. And the it's last thing... Uh -oh. You wrote it down. Okay. Um, I said, do you want me to take it? And you said, I've got it. So I let you got it. Let you got it. Uh, when the spell was cast, because of the sacrifices you made, many of you chose to give away certain memories, um, as opposed to any sort of like powerful magical relics or anything uh, perhaps a little bit more sort of... Uh, uh, substantial. Valuable, substantial. Um, Libram and Testament did return, but there was a few complications. Libram actually returned as a tiefling instead of the human that she was, and Testament had lost the use of one arm. It was magically transformed into like a dull grey that he was unable to move. Um, and that is pretty much where we left things. You guys are taking a long rest. Cam has cast both of his fifth level spells as raised dead um, with the gemstones, and that is pretty much where we left things. Uh, Testament and Libram are basically kind of getting used to their new forms and had headed out. Um, and you can see that the Bucklands are basically getting ready to leave. After resting for the evening and helping you now, they are, they've scrounged up a few wagons. They've scrounged up a few um, kind of carts. Uh, several of them, it looks like, have gone outside of the city and managed to find either wild horses or horses that were perhaps um, have been requisitioned from somewhere. Wild um, horses? Huh? <laughs> Wow. I, I was thinking it too. Okay. I was thinking it too. Uh, <laughs> and they've basically brought those in. <laughs> Don't start that. Do not start that. I thought of doing it. Of all people. Has and it was Katie. <laughs> that was the unexpected part. You two, I've been Sorry. waiting for one of you two to do it. I'm waiting for the best moment. Well, it's ruined now. Sorry, but you talked about horse noises and it just came to mind. Has anyone on this table had any sleep in the last 24 hours? I, I, I'm actually. fine, Kim. I don't know what's going on. They're all mad. Um, but, so, they are preparing to leave the city. Yes. Um, you can see that they have basically, they've gathered a large amount of supplies of whatever they can find. Um, Tom is dying. Just ignore uh, him. <laughs> just ignore him. I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue. Just, just hold that in front of his face. What, <laughs> what are the four of you doing now? I Killing am Reynard. Reynard's probably, away. I'm probably helping the Bucklands load up. <gasps> okay. Giving some advice <clears throat> to the young wings. Yeah. Takel mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, little... just keeping an eye on Morella okay. and Amelia. Yeah, you actually see, um, you don't see Amelia. She didn't come with a big retinue. Um, but as you kind of like start asking around for and stuff, she's basically been put into one of the few kind of like complete covered wagons. Um, Morella's, uh, Amelia's been left in there to recover. Um, and it's actually LD who finds you and she kind of explains. She's like, oh, sweet boy. Uh, she's very, very he's sick. Forgot about it. She's very sick. Uh, lost a lot of blood. We, we must let her rest. It's one thing I can't heal, is the amount of blood in, in a body. Strange magic healing, no help. <laughs> Me, just rest. Help her come back. Good. Are you all prepared? You ready to go? Yes, in fact, we have uh, more people come with us now. Uh, and she gestures, and you can see about a hundred people, like Greybell residents, um, have basically are waiting sort of along the road and are picking up sacks and things like that. Several of them come over, shake hands with a few of the remaining Bucklands. Um, and she says, like, they, they ask us if they can come. Obviously, Bucklands, we welcome. Very nice. We bring them along. Doesn't mean you exploit them. No. Or, you know. She holds up her hand. Boy. And she, like, slaps I mean cheeks. exploit in the way of making them dance for you. No. They're not all dancing partners. She, no. like, she, like, looks at you. She's like, 
they have been through much like we have. They are like family now. We treat them like buckwings. Good. They come with us. We you look make after them. Work for it too. So there's like of a hundred, hundred people that are lined up to go with the bucklings. Yeah. How many people were left in the city overall that we had an idea of? The guy told Cam. He mentioned that there may have been like 200, 250 so like odd. So like half oh, of wow. them are going with the bucklings. Yeah. Whoa. Um, a lot of them seem to be leaving the they, town of shit. <laughs> they, yeah. yeah. You basically like you see them and they look pretty dejected yeah. and like just really sort of like. Some of them appear to be still in shock. Some of them are sort of being guided around by relatives. You can see that some of them have like are nearly collapsed. Like they're so tired, it looks like they might collapse from exhaustion. But the Bucklands actually, for you know, they've been through it as well, and they're kind of helping them along. Like especially the younger ones are sort of like kind of helping them. The citizens of Greybill as well. There's a bigger, wide range of ages. Um, there's a few young men, but they look kind of quite scrawny. They don't look particularly athletic. Um, there's a few young women, um, and then a kind of mix of middle ages and, and very young children. Um, so it kind of adds, because the Bucklands, it was mainly just the old and the young left. So kind of having these grey bell, some people along kind of helps diversify the age groups and things. <clears throat> I'm just going to tell LD mm -hmm. that, uh, yeah. let, let these people know. Hang on, I've got to do my babushka scarf. What's yeah. the hood? <laughs> <laughs> sweet boy, sweet boy. Yes, yes LD, yeah. yeah. Uh, let the people know that are going to return to this town, or at least have an idea, that there will be some people coming to help soon. Good. To Very nice. To repair the town, so they might have something nice. better to come back to in the coming weeks. We yeah. see how they do. If I they wish... A little <clears throat> nod at Reynard in the distance. She kind of leans in, she's like, it would not be a bad thing if perhaps some of them wish to join Permanent. They wish to join us. I know, but you know. If they wish to come home, we let them know they can Just come. Let them know that they're mm -hmm. not going to come back to this. She like gestures like, mm, yes, no one wishes to come back to this, I think. Should be a little better, providing the war doesn't consume everything and destroy everybody. This good, yes, yes. Mm. We travel south, like you said. Yeah. We take, we listen to sweet boy. You're very good, very wise now. I am pretty wise, mm. it has been said. I speak to friend. A horns like demon child, but Tutor. not no other one. Oh, testament, Libram. This one. I forget which one turned she, into a demon. <laughs> they offer escort us south. Nice, because they travel south anyway. Good. And you say they good fight. Oh yeah. Good fight. Despite being in slightly altered bodies, they're still the same people. They look. They help us in. I expect bandit, maybe beast, monster, but they hopefully can deal with. I'm sure, and I mean, you can overwhelm them with numbers. Yeah. Also, Babushka deal with them. Well, maybe not. Yes. I mean, you've got to really think about retiring at some point. Tongue, best weapon. Not in your case. Ugh. It's very forceful what you do with your tongue, but that's a different story altogether. She like looks around, just gives you a wink. Um, Take care. Yes. Do you go now as well? Yeah, we, uh, we're going to the Winter okay. Spire. I have to come say goodbye and she kind of like this doddering old sort of like babushka woman sort I'll of like help comes her up. Put an arm. She like bats you off. She does not need your help. She like blah, 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 and she like busts you off. She comes around, she like gets a lure and she like, despite you being quite short, although you are a bit I'm taller tall, now, right? she kind of like is like, she reaches up, she's like, come, come. And she like kisses you on either side of the cheek and it's just like, thank you once again. She goes up to you, sweet, handsome boy. Yeah. No, 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 no. Come, come, come. And she like grabs, kisses both cheeks. Thank uh, you. Good luck on your travels. Oh, it'd be fine. But better than here. <laughs> she like gestures <laughs> at the horrible, undead, rife city that oh, she's man. currently in. Wow. She goes up to Juta and she's like, she like holds out her hands like this, um, like this, like takes your hands and then she's just like, thank you, everything you do. Always, always welcome with Bucklands now. And she like claps your hands a little bit and then kisses you on either side of the cheek, like pulls you in and then lets you go. Okay, we go now. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. And then she kind of like toddles off. Um, and you see that the, the wagon train slowly begins to just trundle out of the city. You'll, if you leave at the same time, you will easily pass them because they're going quite slow. Um, um, but they we... just kind of leave behind this, yeah. Big mess. <clears throat> did we have a chance to talk to Libram and Testament? If you want to, you can, with you, the can, you can talk to them now. Sky. You can talk to her. Uh, yes, did, she did. She did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's they said that they, they basically, said that they would assemble. They would try forces. and send people. 
Cool. Uh, I, Lee, just, I think Libra said even if she has to just bring herself. She says that she would personally assemble forces yeah. if she could. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm just uh, keeping my little checklist. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, my checklist. I've yep. got a checklist. I will uh, just Somewhere. watch the proceedings as they leave. Yep. The proceedings will go and Morella actually comes and finds you. Um, she kind of like, out of everything, she kind of like makes a waiver and she looks at you and you can see that she's kind of got a bit more of that energy back into her now, like after resting and everything else. Um, her hair, occasionally you just see kind of almost like a pulse of light, kind of like trail down part of her hair and then she kind of looks a bit alarmed and then seems okay. Um, and she comes up and she says, I thought about what I should do and I'm going to stay with M Amelia for the time being. I'm going to head south, but as soon as I hear word that Talisval is safe, I'm, I would like to come. I'd, I'd like to find out more about what's happened. Um, yeah. well, you, and I want to make sure you're okay, you know. You better go quick, because they're going at least two miles an hour right yeah, now. Yeah, I think I can catch up with them. It's fine. That's fine. You do what you need to do. And just be careful when you decide to come back. I'll try and make sure it's safe. I just... If you can send a message first. If you can send a message as well. I don't know if there's find ways way. you can find, if there's I magic am. or something like that, or your god can do something. Like, I don't really know how your powers work, but if you can just let us know that you're okay. I'll find a way. Good. Somehow, right. I'm a very powerful cleric. Yes, well, I can't deny that one. I'm not, yeah, that's true. Like, really powerful though, Morella. Well, mm. I don't know if you've seen just the amount of, people that admire me. Mm. Did you see all the Bucklands? They loved me. That one boy does think you're quite cool, I will admit, yes. And his mates, at least. I'm, um, yep, definitely, definitely. They definitely weren't admiring the other three. No. Sidekicks. Yeah, sure. Listen, <laughs> uh, thank you again for everything you did, and I won't forget what you've done. Well, you better not. <laughs> And she just kind of looks, you're a fucking idiot, and then just starts heading off. Like, learn to speak to women, and then just sort of like walks away. I just did! <laughs> <laughs> then I wave, and then take a moment. She waves back. And yeah, that's it. Um, are the rest of the Grey Bellions around, the hundred mm -hmm. so remaining? I mean, if you start making your way outside the city, around here where the Bucklands are, no. Um, if you want to start making your way out of the city, uh, you probably would see them clearing out houses, kind of doing horrible work, like pulling bodies out of houses, yeah. and like they're starting to build <coughs> funeral pyres and to, stuff. Starting to do stuff though. It's slow but, going though. It's very much like they're kind of burning their dead out of fear almost. You kind of get the sense that they're worried that something else is going to happen, so they're just like, quick while we can, like yeah. burn all the bodies and. They're not really dealing with like the broken walls. They're not really dealing with like the stuff. They're just kind of focusing on what could be a threat or at least, you know, spread plague or disease and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I nobody's gonna... really leading them as well. It tends to be like pockets of like just individuals like clearing out their own homes or a neighbor's house or, you know, somebody that they knew or something like that. Yeah. I almost want to go to them and just sort of yeah. just ensure them and let them know where priorities lie. Like. Yeah. If, if bandits wander past and they see a destroyed farms and all this, then... So as you go over and you start saying this stuff, like you're talking to, you know, a group of maybe sort of like five or six of them that are clearing out a building, and they just kind of look at you, like, like focused on what you're saying. Uh, yeah, just, uh, just letting them know, like, <clears throat> that people are coming, just to inspire them, like a morale boost, that sort of thing, just... It's not the worst mm. yet. I'd like well, the worst is gone. <laughs> Ominous. <laughs> Not the worst yet. The worst is gone, and it's all rebuilding from here for a better future for Greybell. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to advise them as well, like on kind of a better way to sort out the dead, just to stop the rise of disease. And mm -hmm. um, I guess because okay. Juto would have experience, sort of, you know. Okay. Do you want to make me a medicine check with advantage, like on like sort of advising them on the best ways to deal with that and stuff? And then Reynard, if you make a. Let's call it a persuasion check with yeah, advantage, because you do have an inspiring leader. We Natural did. 20. Natural 20. So yeah, you actually kind of calling on your experience, like, you know, not necessarily like from your, with advantage, because you have an inspiring leader, Tom. Good. Oh, God. <laughs> One and a three. <laughs> Juto does a very good job. You kind of taught them through, like, you know, making sure, like, you know, try and find clean water, you know, burn them 
you know, up uh, downwind so that they're not kind of blowing sort of like ashes and, using, and stuff. Like, protection yeah, and like stuff. protection. Like you, it's not necessarily from your days as a slave in Bursaris, but stuff that you've kind of picked up, stuff that the monks probably would have taught you as yeah. well. Like just Dressing about keeping clean and, yeah. and dead and respect and stuff. Um, um, and yeah, that they seem to really like they kind of listen intently, and yeah. you, some of them start like taking on board what you've said. What did you get total? So I got twelve. So I guess I'm kind of saying to them like, you know, be sure to get rid of these, and then someone pulls out a body, and I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that there's also an element of like, like you actually did in real life of like you know the worst is yet to come i mean i mean the worst is past <laughs> but you'll do great and yeah you, yeah i mean it's yeah they kind of like listen and they're like thank you so much again for everything you've done um what people will come uh, people from from talisval uh we will, will come try to gather as many from talisval as we can uh we also have guild leaders we have members of my family personally that will come down to what yeah. what's your family sir uh, the Ferrohorns you've heard of us. I, I'm afraid not. It, uh, it's we're so far. Uh, Greybell, we we don't know too much about Talisval, but the Ferrohorns. Yes, we have a group of people with varying different skills that will no doubt be able to advise on the best course of action in anything that you could need. Um, thank you. And he's just like we'll we'll remember that when they come. We'll we'll speak with them. I and may be able to get theory. some some aid from my family, if I can send them a message. So th there's a spire uh, more relatively elves. nearby. Yes. That would be incredible. Uh, we've never really spoken to elves or, or fey folk before, but any any help, especially magic, we, it's, it's not something that we've ever really encountered. We had a few priests. We've never really dealt with magic since after the Lightfall, so anything like that would, would really help. In the meantime, take this, and I'm going to hold out a pouch. Mm -hmm. um, and say, it should help you at least until um, aid arrives. Um, prioritise food and warm clothing. And it is a pouch of 1,500 gold. Woo! Nice. Um, they did we... kind of take it sort of with uncertainty and like look at you and yeah, they just, they don't even, there's no hesitation. They kind of just look at it. We'll have to send, I'm trying to think, um, there's a few settlements nearby that might still have supplies, we can send people there and, and get what we need. This this will help immensely. Almost everything's either been burnt or we were barely managing to grow a few vegetables to feed ourselves here, so Focus on food and clothing. We and will. then aid should be arriving by then. We will, thank you. Did we have, um, so we traveled from the last town we traveled by horse, mm -hmm. it was the horses from my spire. Mm -hmm. Are they still somewhere outside the city? Where we left them. That's an interesting question. I hadn't thought about the horses. Probably been eaten by wolves. So, Maybe. let's make it percentile chance. Okay. If, they, if they encountered creatures, because they probably would die if they did, because um, they were blood cursed animals. We'll make it a. Okay. So, you head out to where you think the horses were, unless there's anything else you want to do in the town quickly. It was more I was going to give them the horses. Oh, okay. Uh, so you, you tell them where the horses tell were. Tell them where they yep. were. They, they say, we'll, we'll go and find them. Um, I think that the Bucklands did leave some that they found uh, in some of the sort of abandoned farms. Some of the animals were locked in barns. They left some of them here with us. If there um, are but white, if there's more, white horses among them, then you're welcome to those. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's okay. They just kind of, they look very <laughs> dazed. They, they don't really seem to know what to say or do. Um, just kind of relieved that this nightmare is over. Look, what works for the Bucklands is you stay together all the time. You're spread out amongst a huge city. Maybe it's best you kind of even I think if we've you have... got we've got everybody together now. Good. Uh, Your homes are probably in different places, but maybe it's worth. I don't think anybody really has a home left anymore. If any buildings that we had, I mean, he looks around. There's so much empty now. We can just reclaim the manor house, and the Fairhorns will. More than likely, head Manor there. House. Yeah, he kind of looks a bit sort of nervous. I'm, I'm not sure. A lot of people lost loved ones, or they were taken there to be turned into those creatures. Then, what better way to remember them than to reclaim it and make it your own again? Give me a persuasion check. Fifteen plus twelve. <laughs> so twenty-seven. Uh, he kind of like nods. He's like. You're right, no, yeah, we, we need to take this back. 
Out of we'll all the that. houses in the city, I think it's the one that's probably in best condition given the circumstance. Yeah, he did keep some of the Bucklands there, so maybe they've got food and things as well. So, yeah, you're right, we'll do that. Thank you. And just kind of gives a solemn nod. Um, thank you again for everything. It's we won't forget this. Uh, and he, fine. you know, you can see that they've got like one of the, uh, a middle-aged woman sort of like there. She looks a bit scholarly, she, like she's got like broken spectacles, like one of them's kind of shattered a little bit, um, but she's kind of got books and she's speaking to the Bucklands and she sees them like looking over at the four of you and she's writing things down and um, everything else and she seems to be kind of keeping a record of like sort of the aftermath and what's happening. What? Uh, I'm sort of going to call her over like, oh, sorry, uh, what, what is your name? My name, sir. Yes. Uh, Marion. And you are recording this? Uh, well, I figured I, 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 was a, I worked in a, in a small bookstore um, before all of this happened, and I, my, my master died, unfortunately, but I figured that somebody needs to record what's happened here. Uh, the Bucklands have told me your names. I was going to... I didn't want to bother you specifically, and... I wanted to more just keep a historical record rather than a than a anything too fancy, but I see. Well <laughs> my name is Raynard. Are you gonna Farrell. do like the you like wrap a shoulder yeah. like have my I name got is... a story to tell? <laughs> yeah, if you wanna like kind of like lead her off like or walk well, with her. Was... She kind of like will just start writing notes and as she's like listening. It was, it was, initially it was going to be when the Ferrohorns arrive, mm. find uh, Arthur. Okay. And then two can work together. Are to... you still saying this? Or is this, I was going to say this, but now I'm saying this. I have a story to tell you. Mm -hmm. The name's Reynard Ferrohorn. And I am a master hunter of Talisval. <laughs> she starts writing it all down. Uh, I slayed a crocodile. <laughs> Fascinating. Is that, was that before you arrived here in Greybell? Much before then. When I first found this group of people, actually, I slayed Who, them. And uh, did you meet them? When did you meet them? A couple months ago, I guess. Like, <laughs> was that, is that the right timeline? Yeah, yeah it's about right. Yeah. Probably. Um, she kind of interjects occasionally asking questions. They're normally, because you're speaking so much about yourself, it's normally about the other three that... <laughs> well, when I met them, we... Had a couple of encounters that didn't quite go as planned, but we, together, as a group, fought many beasts. I relied on them as much as they relied on me. Have you ever killed a vampire before, Sal? A, 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 vam a vampire? Yes. Uh, Did you have experience before you came here to slay Blackhearth, before you slayed Karen? I mean, do snake people count? <laughs> but you, you've killed snake people? Oh, yes. Oh, fascinating. Uh... I'm. Just and you're from Talisval. I'm from Talisval. Hang on, can I make an a, a adjustment to that one? We all slew the vampire. That wasn't. No, me. no. Yes, I. I know. I understand it. Okay. But I, I just, and the fact that you've never faced a creature like that before and and come and fit is is impressive. Can I roll an insight check? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, okay. Yeah. Don't worry. Five. She's, she's digging this. The Good. Fame. This is it. This is like, this is the beginnings the of your <laughs> uncle's story. Well, regardless. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just in kind of like Reynard's eye line. I'm not interjecting. I'm just standing there. Just like walking him. alongside as you're kind of, I imagine this is like as you're walking sort yeah. of through the streets. And <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying anything. I'm just, not, you know. Just, do you always uh, make sure with your faster movement, you're always in his eye line? <laughs> like, <yeah>. like, like. <laughs> just, just listening. <laughs> it's worth. Probably just, I barely even noticed Juto there, and I'm telling these stories, it's, but the stories I'm telling are effect, very yeah. different to when I initially yeah. joined. Yeah. And I'm this not, is actually more oh, truthful, yeah, more sort of like, we as a group, we as a team. rather yeah. than yeah. I. And um, every time he does that, I'm just going to give a little smile and a nod. <laughs> okay. But also I will tell her to, to, to find Arthur, That's to cool. find Felton as well, mm -hmm. uh, because both of them are going to be oh, yeah. interested yeah, in working cool. with her or learning from her. Or whatever else, just yes, whatever you do. Actually, might have. I, I don't have a lot. I, I honestly, so I, I literally just, I, I looked after books. I just, it, all of this that's happened, I, the people here, they, they're, they're thinking of other things. I can't lift very well. I, I'm not a farmer. I don't know how to grow food or how to look after wounded. But I can write, and I figured that this is a way I can help. 
with what, unfortunately, few of you there is left, every skill is more valuable than you may know, or mean you may think. Um, but this town is going to need management, is going to need yes. documents, is going to need everything, and you will be very helpful. Thank you, that, that means a lot. Around. And she just, you know, like, kind of like, kind of awkwardly and a bit shyly, sort of like a bit of a kind of rosy cheek. You're, you know, you're a handsome guy saying very nice things to, you know, somebody who's gone through something traumatic and she kind of like looks down and looks a bit sort of like, kind of a bit taken. Um, so what's her name again? Marion. Marion. Okay. And yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. Leave it there. Anything else? My passive wisdom is 20 now. Just saying. <laughs> Passive perception. Passive perception. Yeah. Uh, I will be... <laughs> it's like a bat. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> echo location. I think while all this is going on, Gam is just going to be in his own head, mm -hmm. just watching the very last point of the Bucklands leaving and just admiring his golden dagger. Mm. And just in his own thoughts. You see that uh, coin hanging by the chain mm. with the kind of winking Avandra face on both sides, just kind of dangles. It's also unwinks on the other side. Uh, yeah, it does. Like when you flip it, it, but the thing is, is when you when you do it quickly, it looks like she kind of winks and then grins, winks then grins. But then actually, when you stop and you just slowly turn it, it's just her winking on both sides. I'm very enraptured with this, mm -hmm. like a crow to mm -hmm. a shiny right, thing. Right. Oh. Yeah, and the actual blade itself is the metal is gold, but it's almost um, there's something strange, familiar about it. And like as you kind of focus, you can make it change form as well. It does switch from, you can make it dagger, to a short sword, to a rapier, to a scimitar, any finesse melee what? weapon. Mm. Any finesse melee weapon it can become. Whoa. And the metal wow. just kind of goes like... Is that like an instant this. thing? I think it's a bonus action. I, I gave wow. you the card, I think. I'll be practicing this. Do you yes, have the card I gave I do. It's okay. nice one. Uh, and I'll be trying to mess it up by trying to go halfway between the scimitar and a short sword and see if it just kind of stops. It doesn't. I'm it, trying to think of both at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> no. It always, it just stays in the same old form. Um, and that and that's when you almost notice the coin winking and grinning at you. When you try and do that and try and trick it, you swear you can see the, the little icon on the coin just kind of winking and grinning at you. <laughs> cool. Sorry. I'll stop now. <laughs> Cam, are you okay? You're, you're looking huh? at that dagger a lot. Are you okay? So dagger, look. <laughs> Scimitar. But oh, pretty cool. I know. I don't dagger. think you need to maybe concentrate that hard. Have you got the saving throw bonus as well? Have you marked that on your character sheet? You've not looked at this, have you? No. <laughs> I'll be adding that. <laughs> Busted. Attuned. Yeah, I'm so, assuming you've attuned to it. Attuned. I don't think you need to concentrate that hard. <laughs> I feel like you might fart. Uh, I'm gonna try and make it a hammer. Doesn't work. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Stays in. You work the last on that. Four Have you got invoke duplicity? Because I'm seeing double. <laughs> no, I think you've just been looking at that dagger for way too long. Oh Christ! Okay. Bit of a headache. Um, it's currently in scimitar form. That was the last one you had it on. Yeah. I'm ready to go. If you guys are ready to go. Is yeah. everyone else ready? Everyone else has left. I think yeah. the only thing we've told them that aid is on its way. That's it. Aid Who's aid? Tell us well. What? The Farrowhorn family are aid. Well, well I, I know Arthur in that lot, but who's aid? Just leave him. Let's go. It's like he's had his moment. Like he's had his serious moment. And now he has to crank up the dumb to like <laughs> the ten. It's like, it's like dumb count that. Look, I've just strained my brain trying yeah. to make a sword. Okay. So Can't hold two, two thoughts. There's only, there's only so much serious RP Chris Trot can take. Yeah. That's it, my quote was reached for the year. Yeah. Um, so there's enough horses for all of us to take some and then... Uh, some not if you're giving the no, ones, the other ones up to the Bucklands. We don't need them. Yeah, we're we doing tree travel. Oh <laughs> yeah, okay. We can tree travel. Carry on. So, where would you like to go? I'm guessing you'll uh, transport via plants. Yeah. But the question is, to where? I would quite like... Guys, to go to the Winter Spire. We haven't checked in with them since my father was captured. And so cold there, though. Yes, but they also have an army to aid Telesval. And they have like frost armor and stuff, which is even colder. But that armor would be useful in a fight, Telesval. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Plus the giants. Maybe we could get Sverrir as well while we're there. I'm afraid I'd like passes out from hypothermia or something. 
Then if you do, him. I'm sure he'll be fine. I don't what? have my cloak. I'm very cold. And have been for the last... Well, you chose to give that up. Oh. That was a choice. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> so the winter spire... Wait, sorry, there. giant? Hmm? Yeah, there's, there's giants There's there. frost, frost giants. giants. And then there's this little we town. We met a really nice next frost to giant. Palo. A nice frost giant. Yeah, he's called Sperrier. He has a wolf. Yes. He has a, oh, he has a wolf. It's a dire wolf. It's really big. Called Hal. He's very cool. He's definitely not with the other, you know, no. bad giants. No. He hates the colours yellow and black, though, so be careful. Does he? Mm. Mm. And human hunters. Mm. Well, that's all too convenient, isn't it? <laughs> and Reynards. He hates. Reynards. And Ferrohorns. Yeah, um, particularly Reynard Ferrohorns. While you, you dwell really on that, I'm going to go and find too. a suitable tree. You do have to go a little bit outside yeah, the city it's because it's all be... dead. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, figured. the influence of the vampire uh, extends out to about five miles. Um, so you have to pretty much head outside of the city. Um, you travel, yeah, about five miles. I can't remember how long that takes you because I don't have the... To... Oh, here we go. Um, if you go at a normal pace, it takes you about two hours. Um, sure. yeah. So you travel about two hours. It's still early morning because you did take a long yeah. rest. Um, so uh, you manage to head out and you do find like a small grove of trees, like kind of like a little kind of like English kind of countryside little pocket of woods, basically. Um, you find like the this biggest oak, big? biggest tree that you can find. You cast a spell and a green sort of portal, like the, the tree kind of warps. <clears throat> and you kind of hear it. And the wood stretches and a big green portal opens. And on the other side, you see a wintry, snow-covered land, fir trees all around, um, thick snow. Go, go, just go, Just before go, go. everybody goes in, I'm just oh, going to... Six seconds no, before? No, six or? seconds. Go, right, go. go. <laughs> <laughs> Laura just throws you all through the portal um, at this point. And yeah, you basically hear this pop behind you and a sudden intense cold. Um, Reynard, uh, you are, yeah, super freezing cold, Bucklands, oh. Juto. I'm going to um, use my elemental. Just to kind of keep yourself warm. Yeah. Um, everybody, uh, even a Laura to an extent, actually, no, you've got the frost giant belt, so actually it kind of, you're, you feel pretty fine. Um, okay. It doesn't give yeah, you a belt. Please nerf. Yeah. No. Uh, and Never. yeah, it's just like this bitter cold, kind of imagine being sort of out in sort of like, you know, cold land. Um, I don't know, I can think of anywhere where. Uh, and yeah, you see this large kind of pine fir tree forest around you. Thick snow kind of rises up to you just above your ankles. Um, big frosty mountains in the background. Vancouver. Kind of, yeah, kind of Vancouver-y kind of type. Just, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, nice blue touch there. Oh, um, what was that? And yeah, you Just see uh, there's a large mountain range kind of uh, on the horizon, but just before then, maybe about sort of um, an hour's journey away, about three miles or so, uh, you see kind of a wall of ice, like a wall of ice around uh, a spire of, yeah, ice, like this jagged, huge tower um, that rises up. It's wider and taller than anything you've seen in any of the big cities, Reynard. Um, and it seems to be composed entirely of ice. And you can see tiny figures just moving around on the walls outside. I, have, have I seen the moon spire from... I guess I have. I've seen yeah, the, you've seen the moon spire outside. Very similar, but different. The moon spire has multiple different prongs, like mm. almost like different points coming up. And it was all made from this kind of almost like luminescent white stone. Um, this looks similar, but is just a single tower with a top which is kind of shrouded in like an icy mist. Okay. Um, and you can see that actually part of the tip has been broken. Um, it looks like maybe something exploded or something <laughs> like some sort of damage at the top. Or just um, a tip. Yeah, it can. wasn't anybody. Uh, and, uh, and then, yeah, you just see these walls, this like icy wall around it. And you can see that there are, vi there are buildings oh, at the base of the tower as well, but they're mainly yeah, obscured by the wall. The okay. He touched the ground. Is uh, Reynard noticeably cold? I mean... Yes. I would imagine both of you, unless like you I, are as well. Unless I do a particular, like, performance check, maybe? Just, like, a performance. <laughs> oh, right. oh, well, like, just, if you want to try and pretend that you're fine, it would be deception, probably. Uh, okay. Uh, well, actually... I'll be an insight if you want to... That's 21. Oh, oh that's good. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Always when it comes to... 33? 33! <laughs> I mean, he's I'm like, he's like... <laughs> but then every now and then, every now and then my shoulder shakes. Hard nipples. It's okay to be cold. Yeah, your nipples are like right okay. out there. Like Why you cut glass, <laughs> cut glass on those nipples. Now, Reynard, 
The Bucklands have, we've done cold nights and camping, so. Okay, I've let's talk tip. and walk, people. Talk and walk. It's not getting any warmer. Like, I'm going walk and I'm just like jogging on the spot, just oh, like. All right. <laughs> just like, it's okay. I'll, I'll hold your arm. You close your eyes and then this is what we do to feel warm, okay? It's, it's psychological. Why is closing my eyes going to help, Cam? Just picture, okay? We're going to picture goodness and you'll feel warmer, okay? Picture Ready? goodness. Just close your eyes. Ready? Here we go. Uh, as, uh, as we're jogging along. Right, picture, mm -hmm. picture ice cubes, oh. really cold Wait, ice no. cubes. Wait, no, ice cubes, no. And waterfalls of really cold water. I'm trying water to picture a fire pouring side. all over you. Uh, and no, you're it's cold. Freezing <laughs> up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> freezing up. You're going to die of hypothermia. Uh, Cam, you, as you're saying this, like, you can feel like the skin around your neck just beginning to like I go icy cold. Like you feel this howling, frigid air blowing all over oh, like, your shit. neck and the hands and body. <gasps> Oh, I need to stop talking. It's really powerful. <laughs> I stuff. don't know why you were saying it. Okay, it's bad. roaring fire. Oh. Roaring fire. The fire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You be like flames begin to kind of lick the back of your neck. Like, is oh that, my is god, that hair burning. Like, it's like never used to work this well. Like, I don't can you feel that? No, it's singed. just cold. I feel like I'm actually burning. <laughs> what do you mean? <sighs> wow. Okay. Nice uh, feminine female touch. But think of that, think of uh, just nice, <laughs> warm, <laughs> <you> cold, <laughs> <head>. <laughs> massive slap, like a powerful, like wham, around the back of the head. I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just keep going. You look behind you, Jesus just stood there. <laughs> awkward Juto smile on his face. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep like walking. Out. I love the awkward Juto smile so much. <laughs> um, I take it you guys then make your way towards this point. Okay, uh, you, when you're about a mile outside, you can see these walls rising up. Um, you can see uh, guards, and Reynard, this will be your first time seeing them. So you see the guards here are all elves with a very pale um, skin, like not pale blue, more of like a pale kind of cream, like very near, not quite white, but very, very you know, pale human skin tone. Mm. They all have uh, dark blue or black hair. Um, occasionally white or grey as well. Okay. Um, they wear, the guards wear armour that looks almost like sculpted ice. Like it almost kind of comes up into like icicle spikes and things like that around the shoulders. Cool. Um, but they don't seem to be bothered by it at all. Some of their clothing has got like white fur around it as well. Um, they carry spears, shields made of ice. Most of their weapons have a kind of like ice motif or theme. Um, oh. And as you approach the gate, um, you, a few arrows kind of thump, thump, thump into the snow and you just hear a Who's going, who goes there, like, kind of thing. Um, Hi. And then they kind of, like, narrow their eyes, and they look down. You almost killed a princess. Of the Moonspire. Good job. <laughs> um, one of them darts off and seems to run away, and then the other one is just like, not really, if I wanted to have actually shot you, I could have easily done that. Please miss, don't. Uh, I won't, Miss Galanadel. Welcome. I've just sent word ahead to the main spire. Uh, please come in. We'll find you some warm cloaks. Thank you. And you see this giant sort of like snow gate just melt. It just kind of goes blah, 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 yeah. and it opens up into the city itself. The spires are cool, man. Yeah. Um, and you can see that inside there are a number of like buildings made from like a stone cold, look, uh, like a cold gray stone. Um, but you can see elves happily going around the business as if it was like summer. They're just walking around in like normal <laughs> tunics. They're mental like, kids. Baskets. Isn't it? They're absolutely insane. You can see their baskets are loaded up with um, things like, you know, pears or like yams and things like that. Uh, different kind of fruits, um, grains, breads, that sort of thing. Any orange glows coming from anywhere? Uh, there's no fires that you see, but oh. two guards <laughs> do kind of approach with thick, like, wolf pelts. Oh. And they kind of offer them to you. Oh, thank um, you. If you want one, you can take one. Um, and there, they offer them to you. And then an, an escort of about two, three guards begins leading you kind of down like a main thoroughfare. There's not really a busy town around the base of the spire. It's mainly kind of a collection of buildings, shrines, fountains, like water wells and stuff like that. But the spire itself is enormous and very grandose. It kind of rises up and you can see that almost everything is constructed from ice. Mm. Um, but it's as you touch it, it feels warm, it feels pleasant. Um, it doesn't, you don't slip on it. It's completely stable. You can move around as normal. Um, it just has the appearance of ice, it seems. Can you see through it? Sort like, of. You can semi see through it, but then it becomes like like thick, dense ice. As yeah, the yeah. light gets into <clears> it, it gets so distorted that you can't really see what's going on behind it. Um, it's almost like it's frosted. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Walk up next to Alora in this huge wolf pelt. Mm -hmm. Say, I bet Listry's going to be so happy to see you. I can't wait to see him myself. Such a nice guy. 
And then I'm gonna I just saw on. you talk to Morella. Huh? Yeah, I heard what you were saying to her, so don't even start. It's great. We have a full back and forth conversation with flowing dialogue. It's no, amazing. I wouldn't. I wouldn't Did he that. not send you a letter, Laura? <laughs> yeah, a while ago. Did yes. you reply? Yes, I did. He hasn't actually heard from us since my father was captured, so he probably doesn't know what's going on in Tell's file right now. The doors to the ice uh, spire opened and you are led inside. Um, you can see that there are like the furnishings of what you would expect in a royal palace. Uh, rugs, there are paintings mounted on the icy walls, there are statues. Um, as you're walking down, you do notice that several of the statues that were here the last time you were here are missing. Um, any of the Cylindris and mm. figures of those mm. paintings of Cylindris mm. have also been removed. Um, instead, they've been replaced with statues that represent the, the Winter Spire as a whole. Uh, you see that there is a, a kind of a painting of the Spire instead, mm. where the family portrait was, <coughs> was. There is now one of just the Spire in this kind of wintry wonderland sort of thing, um, Winterland. Um, the, stat the sculptures have been turned into things like the sort of shields and the spears, um, things like that. Kind of more sort of things about the people rather than the royal family. Um, and as you make your way through, you see various elves of different genders and, and types kind of moving past you. But the guards eventually lead you to what is effectively sort of like the throne room. They lead you down in towards the main sort of audience chamber. Um, they open these doors and you see this long hall with benches like made from this ice with cushions. Um, there are braziers with torches, but the torches kind of have like a pale white light. Um, and they kind of send this white light through this kind of beautiful blue ice cavern um, and you can see that the throne root the thrones themselves have been removed instead there is a large table um, with several chairs around it um, on which one of them you see a familiar black haired with a white streak of hair sort of like running down to about shoulder length looking very tom hiddleston loki style cut of like pushed back um, but Thank you can you see a man, he wears blue um, and white and black kind of tunic with robes. Um, but one of his hands, Reynard, this is probably the first thing you would notice, one of his hands is completely made from ice. Um, and it's currently, um, it currently has a position of just like an open palm. Um, and he kind of has it resting on the table. And he's kind of gesturing and talking <coughs> to several people, one of the guards that you saw in the wall. And then he kind of like eyes, he kind of like looks up. And you can see he's kind of got like a thin face, but he's definitely kind of, he's not as thin as he did look the last time you saw him. He looks like he's, he's actually kind of like filled himself out a little bit. Um, and he kind of stands up and he carries himself a little bit differently now. Um, and he kind of stands up, looks around. He briefly glances over the three of you, but his eyes immediately settle on Elora. And he just kind of stands up, gets up, starts walking down. He like comes within sort of like speaking distance to Elora. Why did you not tell me you were alive? What? What? The last thing I got word of was that you found your father and you were going to rescue him and Silva... Hi. Hello. I'm very glad to see you alive, but please do not send me words like that and then do not follow them up when things are better. Well, um, there wasn't really a good opportunity to sit and write a letter since can you you can you not send birds or something? Isn't that something not your mother that, can do? Not that far, no. <sighs> I'm going he to just like very, rubs his forehead very carefully and slowly, but very pointedly, put my foot on cams. <laughs> just like and start I'm pressing not put, well, just put enough pressure on him to kind of. Yeah. He just kind of like, and you watch as he kind of focuses, and his arm kind of kind of grows. It kind of reshapes into a kind of like a more sort of like formal gesture, and he just looks. He's like, I'm very glad that you are alive. How's your father? He's fine. Everything's Good. fine. Well, fine-ish. What? I sent some of my scouts and they never returned. I sent them to Veldaban. Did you ever meet them? Did you see them? There were some scout bodies when we found Silval. My sister, why? Why have you done this? Is she, what happened to Silval? I, is she dead? I'm assuming that you had to kill her. She was relentless. <sighs> She almost killed Cam. You mentioned the bracer, the, the demonic bracer that Miss Duto once had. How did she get it? Why, why were they working together? I don't understand. That mm. bracer kind of has a way of attracting a certain personality, and I think that when it didn't get what it wanted from Duto, it found a kindred spirit in Sylval and her thirst for revenge. Because of what we did. 
course. Juto, my foot really hurts, if you wouldn't mind. Are you going to behave? I'm behaving! I haven't said a word yet! Please. You're doing this You understand, I, face. I can hear you both. Oh, I know, but Just my foot Miss Jean, me. <laughs> Miss Jean, please, it's fine. Ah, Mr. So, Nalistri, how's it going? Very well, and he offers his icy hand to shake. Good to see you, Cam. Don't be rude, Cam. Yes, please don't be rude. <laughs> oh, pinky it. <laughs> pinky it? It's very cold. Like, he sends like a little <laughs> bit of frost down the <laughs> finger. Oh, sorry, I'm not quite used to it just yet. <laughs> Miss Jing, and he takes a very formal bow. Um, in Infernal, he says, I hope you're well. I return and say, it is pleasing to see that you are doing incredibly well. I am doing my best. It has been strenuous. No, Lily Street. He kind of looks at Laura and then he's like, Ah, and who is this? A new companion, perhaps? Uh-huh. Uh, no, um, with the whole Crown Red thing, unfortunately, Trelamar has been changed into a human. <laughs> You're in deception, sir. <laughs> For God's sake. 20. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Is there a way that we can, I, I can use my magic to help M- Mr. Trelamar? I'm more than happy to dedicate my magical skills if, if you require it. That would be very generous of you, Nalistri. Thank you. No need. Please ignore him. Uh, I do my best to. I'm sorry. Is this, uh, I'm it's, not Trelamar, n- n- it's not Trelamar. It's not Trelamar. No. This is Raymond. Reynard. <laughs> Reynard Ferrahorn. Clearly, there is some history here that I'm missing, and I look at Cam and say, and I want to know more. He <laughs> literally clicks his fingers, and a kind of shimmering, icy mist kind of forms and fetches a fruit bowl and just brings it over to Cam. Oh, Cam, look, grapes. Oh! oh. For, and then the servant starts leading Wait, you away. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like starts moving you I over to the side, <laughs> like next to a little chair. Are they, are they frozen grapes? Wow. I yeah. need to remember that one. I really do. <clears throat> Nalistri, was it? Nalistri Frostwalker, technically, I believe. I am the steward of the Winter Spire, and he offers a, an icy kind of hand. Well, I'm, I'm I promise sort of... I won't do the same trick as. Oh, well, I'm going to sort of delicately, like, I'm not sure if I. It kind of reforms into a very firm sort of handshake. Oh. And then he has to, fo- every time he does it, every time it changes shape, you watch him kind of close his eyes and then it reforms and then it kind of goes into the shape he wants. Uh, I'm very, very pleased to see you all again. Uh, yeah, just, I'm very glad you're all alive. <laughs> uh, especially some of you more than others. Um, please come and sit and he gestures to the table. I'll keep Cam distracted for the time being. Wow, a whole imagine. bunch of grapes. Do you need? <laughs> just say if you need more. Oh, I will. Thank you, Delicia. And just leads you over to the table. Um, I'm afraid things have been quite busy uh, while you've been gone. I've been desperately trying to undo the work that uh, my fa- father, I suppose, uh, got up to here in the Frostbire. It's not been easy, but I think that people are beginning to trust me more, um, thanks to the uh, some of the help from some of the other. Older elves, anyway. Um, what brings you here, uh, apart from obviously bringing me some relief to know you're alive? Um, I don't know how much you're aware of in terms of what's going on in Talisvel. Uh, not much. I've sent again when I didn't hear back from my scouts or from you. I, I did send a, a messenger to Talisvel, but they've not returned either. I, I was beginning to worry. Talisvel is no longer under the control of Korak. Mm. There is a council in place that make decisions for it. I met, I met the council briefly when I first came to Talisfal to meet all of you. Yes, I remember them. Korak is campaigning to get control back and the people have been responding well, but there is a, the Broken Sky have threatened to destroy Talisfal and the whole Dawn Republic. You mentioned the, this Broken Sky before, some sort of group that are seen, trying to undermine Korak. Yes, they're currently, well, Falania, their leader is a cloud giant, she's... Cloud giant? They have a very large airship and they could be above Talisfal already. These were the ones that we, we saw a cloud giant when on, the, on the way here when I was accompanying you. The, the Burning King, he swore allegiance to this Broken Sky or something yes. like that. We rescued some people from the, those hobgoblins. Yes, I remember now. Well, this is grave news. Um, when did you send the scouts to Talisvar? I sent my scouts to Veldaban when I received Allura's letter weeks ago, but then when I didn't hear back, uh, perhaps a, 
uh, five days ago, I sent a, a messenger to Telesval. How long does it usually, do we know how long it takes for a messenger to get to Telesval usually? About five days. About five days. But like, so. yeah, I mean, he's just, yeah, he's, and at least she says, I, I did give him a scroll of sending to report back to me, but I never heard anything. Mm. Uh. We've unfortunately been out of the city dealing with I don't know if you well, heard, clearly. there's been a lot of things going on. I'm sure, you're looking you... very different. Oh, I got a belt that's kind of changed some things. He kind of looks at it for a moment and he kind of waves his hand and a little bit of magic kind of gleams over his eyes like, ah, I've a scald, a frost giant belt, I believe. Um, and he just kind of nods, very powerful relic. It's been quite useful. I imagine so, and um, has certainly uh, nope, I'm not going to say that. Um, <clears throat> so awkward. She could definitely so beat you at arm wrestling now. Uh, he kind of holds up the icy hand. I don't doubt that any of you could beat me at arm wrestling, Miss Jing. Um, you still just eat. I've just walked back in. <laughs> Continue. Yes, thank you, Mr. Buckland. Um, well, if you need to stay this evening, uh, or if you need to get back to Talisval, I have been. I've been preparing a teleportation circle here in the Winter Spire. Um, I believe that there is a wizard at court, uh, Alfred yes. uh, Gluevice. He contacted me um, on Korak's behalf. Uh, he's been instructing me on a, a teleportation circle diagram, one that I can replicate and transport a small number of people to Talisval as necessary. I was planning on visiting within the next couple of days to try and find you. Sorry. <clears throat> No, it's Bad. all right, as, as long as you're okay. Uh, oh, it's been such an arduous past few days. Well, if, if you need to rest, you are always welcome Overnight? here. Overnight? Oh, yes, of course. Perfect. Thanks, Nalistri. You're That'd always be welcome. Wonderful. We've just killed vampires. You'll have to tell me this over dinner. I'll, I'll, I'll have dinner can prepared. Fill you in. Yeah, I, I'm. Or you can fill. Just, you know, just update. He goes like you see his cheeks just go very, very violently red. Um, I am not hungry, and neither is Raymond. We do not di need dinner. Do you share right. a stomach? I mean... Elora, you said you were hungry, though. Uh, I hate you all a little bit. I am <laughs> not hungry. You did say that a lot. I've just eaten grapes, <clears throat> so I'm fine. Cam, we should go and find the frost giant. That's right. That's right, we, we should. I'm just like not looking at Alora. <laughs> you can see in the least tree is looking at Cam and his hands are like half making spell gestures. <laughs> and he's just like, yes, uh, uh, the frost giants. I, I haven't heard from them recently, actually. Not they, even Hallow? Uh, Hallow I've been dealing with uh, considerably. They've actually been an enormous help in um, getting things back and running. Uh, the troubled lands, the, the wintry lands where we are, uh, they're quite dangerous. We've encountered uh, packs of gnolls, um, beasts. They've been harassing people uh, throughout the land. The people of Hallow needed our help and we needed theirs. We don't really know the terrain very well. Also, I'm beginning to understand a bit more of what, uh, what Salandris was trying to, well, his responsibilities. Uh, I don't know if your father's ever spoken too much about this, but the Feywild, when Cam destroyed the, the Crown of Broken Ice, of Black Ice, it drew a lot of attention from powerful spirits in the Feywild. They've been testing the barriers between the material plane and, and theirs. I've had to commit quite a lot of my forces into repelling them. Uh, it's, it's a bigger task than I ever gave my father credit for, I'm afraid. Um, I have only a few real personal guards here in the city itself, a small garrison just to defend it from the walls. But Hallow has been very helpful in dealing with things like the, the gnolls and the creatures out in the, the wastelands. But no, uh, the Frost Giants, Sferiera said that he had to return to his tribe for something, and then we never heard from them ever since. Hmm. Maybe he it's was... worth us investigating. I still have his horn. Oh, yeah. I couldn't send anyone to investigate, I'm afraid. I, I couldn't spare the resources. I think we can summon him. Well, if you can, by all means. Well, Laura should stay here, though. She needs rest. Uh... <laughs> he just, he like looks, he's like, I'm sure Miss Galanadel can make that decision for herself. Um, she's very capable of, of deciding her own future, Miss Jing. And he kind of looks at you yes, hard. Yes, Miss Jing. It's worth showing her where the bedchambers are anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
You don't, do you even know what's going on? You don't on? even know. Or is this like Reynard genuinely innocently saying this? <laughs> or is this Reynard reading know. the room? Roll for it. I think I saw how he was. You can make around. an insight check. Yeah. I was saying that. <laughs> 16. That's probably With enough. Actually, that's probably <laughs> enough to pick up on the least three. Um, Miss Gilanadel is very much aware of where the guest chambers are. Um, I. Oh, she's been there before. Will of course. Sorry. Obviously, if you need my assistance, uh, I do have a lot of things to do. I do have a brief question yes. of a more serious nature. Please. Have you heard anything. of a magical artifact? <laughs> 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 it's a serious coke drinking. <laughs> he sips his magic elixir. <laughs> Gassy. Um, have you heard of a magical artifact called the Everseed? Oh, yeah. Everseed. Everseed. Nope. <laughs> nope. Something. I'll need to check the books. We do have a fairly substantial library here. Something of, I remember a fey creature, an arch fey at one time, had a, a relic of this nature. It's said to be quite powerful. The summer elves in the summer spire, they remember it. It was an old story from before they split off from the rest of the elves, before we became the independent spires. I remember the summer elves were looking for it for a long time. Mm -hmm. I were have they, it. Were they looking for it for good reason? The summer elves are risky. Uh, it's difficult, and he kind of looks around, and you can see a few of the guards at the na the, the kind of mention of summer elves. Some kind of the guards roll their eyes or like kind of like <laughs> kind of like make disgusted sounds. They were not. They are not particularly liked by the winter spire. The summer elves are reckless. Uh, they are very competent warriors. They actually lead the charges against Archfey strongholds in the Feywild. Um, very, very powerful warriors and fighters amongst all of them. They are, however, reckless. Uh, they will tame wild beasts uh, to make attacks alongside them. They have been known to take magical relics, which are perhaps best not used by anybody to fight their battles. Um, the Winter Spire has also had issues with this in the past, but we tend to be a bit more conservative, uh, uh, perhaps a little too so, in some might say. Uh, two sides of a different coin, summer and winter. Um, I wonder, would you like the Everseed? It could be used as a point of diplomacy with the Summer Elves. Uh, could help with the whole Fae situation, the lack of the Black Crown. It would be a very powerful tool. My concern is if Archfey were to breach our defences and get hold of it, that would be quite dangerous. It's already quite dangerous. It's already I also dangerous worry with you travelling around with it. I know it can be unpredictable. Um, it makes grapes very large. Well, that's not it's, the worst it can do. It's broken. It's cracked. It's cracked. Yeah. It is this leaking. is more serious. If that crack continues to grow, it could release its very ancient magic. That would be an explosive force of considerable power. Do you have people here that can investigate it? Me. Keep it under wraps? Uh, myself, yes. I, uh, I am an arcane, a student of Arcana. I, I, myself and this Alfred fellow in Talisval have been discussing things using magic, the ascending and books and tomes and things. Felania wanted the Everseed, and Felania is targeting Talisval. So ideally... Leave it within our vaults temporarily, if nothing else. We have magical vaults here that we store artifacts in. Um, Would it deal with the gas that this thing is leaking? That, by the way, turns creatures into large creatures. It's just a crack, or you say. <laughs> Let me see if there is a simple spell that might be able to fix this. Similarly, if you touch the seed, you turn to stone. Uh, wood. 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 Mm hmm. How much have you experimented with this? Have you tried touching with different materials? Organic? Or Anything what is organic it? turns to wood. He holds up his ice hand. I don't. I don't oh, know. That's a good point. I mean. Well, we haven't. We Can haven't touched it, it because of the. Are you able to reverse the the wood? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, I'm able to. I'm able to reverse that, but the gas is another matter. It's it's constantly leaking a gas that. Where turns is where is the item? It is in my bag. Would you permit me to take your bag? I will take it into the vaults. There is a spell I can cast on myself that will protect me from gas. If you are confident. It, w it does 
the gas turns creatures aggressive and larger. I'm not a very aggressive person. Worst case it might do is it might give me a bit of a spine. He kind of laughs nervously. <laughs> Let me deal with it. This is a relic of Elven make. I appreciate Miss Galanadel. This might be better suited to my situation. Let me try and deal with it. I would be more comfortable if it was left with you. He, he needs to holds out hands, away. like takes the bag of holding. Ah, yes, I'm familiar with these. If you wouldn't mind, um, I can construct a wall, a wall of force. You'll be able to see me, but hopefully the gas won't escape uh, to you. Just if something happens to me, you can reverse the spell, hopefully. Yep. Follow me. Um, and he takes the bag and he makes his way downstairs. He heads down to where um, Shalana was actually being kept prisoner for a while when she was in a werewolf form. And he moves up. Uh, no. I wasn't aware of this vault. Reynard is completely lost, I'm guessing, at this point. He actually moves it's up. The whole werewolf thing. I discovered uh -huh. this after uh, you left. Um, he holds up one of his hands and part of the ice wall melts away and reveals another chamber beyond the prisons, beyond these cells. My father obviously kept this place as a bit of a secret. I think he kept the crown of black ice in here for a time. Oh. It seems to prevent scrying on magical items. I think quite important, that, uh, uh, that crown. Stay there. Please um, be careful. Don't do this if you're going to hurt yourself. I don't, I don't want you to be affected by anything that this does. We don't know what it does. He smiles a bit. Uh, I'll be fine. I wouldn't do this if I wasn't confident that I could deal with it in some manner. I also have telekinesis ready, so I don't have to touch the, the object. That will help, but put it he, at a distance. He steps in, um, and then he kind of clicks his fingers. A wall of sort of shimmering force energy erupts Whoa. around the doorway. He holds the bag open, realizes that he has to kind of reach in, gets his ice hand. It doesn't turn to wood. Pulls it out and is holding the ever seed in his ice hand. Um, he looks at it, examines it for a time. His eyes show the same kind of detect, identify magic. He nods and then with a finger, he doesn't touch it, but he begins tracing a line along the crack. And you watch as it begins to fuse and mend together. The gas is spilling over. He kind of... <coughs> <coughs> and it seals, and the gas kind of stops and kind of just dissipates. He kind of looks at it for a time. And then places it on a pedestal in the middle of the room. Stands back. Clicks his fingers, and a ice dog kind of appears next to it. He seems to speak a few words. And he turns around, waves his hand, and the force dissipates. A dog. He steps back out of the room and then turns around and seals it with the ice wall. That was easier than I expected. <coughs> the gas was... Uh... It took us how long to get that? Whole episode. Whole episode. <laughs> Whole, episode. <laughs> Whole, episode. <laughs> Whole episode. None of you have an ice hand, however. No. Oh, so, God. Uh, yeah, it only affects or a actual dog. Like, living flesh matter, basically. Um, it wouldn't have worked on undead as well, for those asking. Oh. Like... Uh, uh, <laughs> so you know, really. uh, he turns around, he's like, yes, uh, an old spell, uh, an old human wizard called Mordenkainen developed it. Uh, the guy, it will protect it for several hours, just in case. Uh, it's the least I could do. I figured I should do something. But the vault itself should keep it safe. Only people of my bloodline can technically open it. So. Uh, you sure you're right? Yes, I think so. Uh, I feel a bit confident, um, but not aggressive. Hmm. How do you feel about Cam? He kind of smiles. I will say that if he continues making jokes about the way people feel, I might have to do something about it. Please but, do. Well, you're not entirely excused either, Miss Jane. I make jokes. Uh, not funny ones. And then he kind of grins. Wow. That was quite quick, wasn't it? Quite the spy. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good in the history. He's Thank you. He's, <laughs> he's very good. Um, <laughs> May I have the bag, please? And she was back. Uh, and then I just want to think about grapes. And one of those big, like, and it's bigger than the last one uh, that Cam had. This one is huge. It's like... You should really empty this bag. It's like... And it's, it, as soon as you kind of lift it, it just bursts into this horrible, stinky purple oh. ichor. Just... Uh. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh. <laughs> I believe it has contaminated organic matter in the bag. Do you wish to... You might as well empty the rest of it here. Uh, I'll have some people clean it. I'll, probably, <laughs> yeah. I'll, send, I'll conjure some unseen servants to deal with this later. Um, 
What I, a waste. I, managed, <laughs> I did maintain one slot of power for my spells if you require my teleportation circle. It is the only one I can cast for today. However. Where does that teleportation circle actually take us in Talisman? Yeah. Uh, Alfred Glueweiss's laboratory, I believe. Um, I'm not Do we know where that is? Uh, that's in, that's in, in uh, Champion's Hold. Oh, God. So that's in the council, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, God. So you're going to have to be careful. That's right, How much communication council. have you had with Alfred himself? Uh, we've been speaking uh, quite a lot. Uh, we exchanged discussion on magical theory. Um, Recently? Yeah, you're well. Uh, I spoke to him a few days ago. Uh, sometimes I, I do practice the teleportation circle by travelling there. We speak, we enjoy lunch, and then I travel back occasionally. He doesn't mention the council. Well, his laboratory, he told me the reason I did not try and find you when I teleported to Tasval is he likes to keep his laboratory secret. Um, he would rather that I didn't leave out into the city itself. I didn't ask him to come and find oh. you, but he said he hadn't seen you. And I suppose you haven't seen any of Talisval in the time that you were there? No, I, I stayed in Alfred's room. It, it was a way for me to practice the magic and to ensure I had the teleportation circle correct mm. more than anything. Okay. I didn't want to risk exposing his private chamber. I don't think we want to risk doing that. Well, the option is there much. if you wish to save your strength. And do we wish to find Sveria? I think it would be wise to at least Why don't we go consider that? that as an option while we're here because... We, we initially came here to, unfortunately, ask, and you've already said that a lot of your forces are taken by this I'm Feywild. Afraid, sir, the responsibilities of the Spire, unfortunately, don't stop for the need of the rest of the mortal realm. I will do what I can. Uh, Perhaps. He kind of leans in and he kind of looks around, and there's actually no guards with you because he's taking you down into the vaults. Of course, if I were to travel to Talis Val and bring some of my guards and was not able to return that day and something was to occur that we needed to defend ourselves that I could summon my personal guard that, that is perhaps all I can manage I would not want to leave the town too undefended no, that's all. but obviously my skills you saved my home you saved me they are yours as you wish them I have been working on my magic specifically to aid the Dawn Republic as best as I can. Let's go blow that horn, you two. How is... Elora, just before you go, your mother and father, they are all right? They are well. My father is not as young as he, as he once was, mm. but he thinks that he is. Mm. Uh, so. Yes. Well, I think perhaps the encounters here perhaps is hopefully taught him a little bit of that. I think so. My mother has confiscated his weapon, but he <laughs> has found it again. So I don't really know. I imagine it's a lot of them arguing over him trying to spar with people that he shouldn't be fighting. He kind of thinks for a moment. Perhaps we can... We lost a lot of our experienced fighters during the conflict and we, you saw you, ourselves we had to face several of the officers here perhaps I can invite your father up here to train some of my fellows some of the soldiers here it might give him something useful to do it could give get rid of some of those eager energies he has um, and I know that he does like teaching I saw I always spoke quite fondly of teaching Salandris that might be something we can do and also it might Get him out of your mother's hair for a time. I have said to them that they shouldn't travel to Talisfell. Mm. The Moonspire is providing forces to help, but I've tried to forbid him. I just hope that he listens. So any other distractions that can take him away from that, he shouldn't be fighting in that battle. Mm. Good. Very well. Do well. you have contact with the Summer Spire? I don't. No, they're one of the, the summer and spring. Um, Shalana and your parents, obviously we, we can reach out to a little better now, uh, but the spring and summer, unfortunately, they're still lost to us. I would appreciate if I could send a message home. Yes, uh, I have, um, I can either send it for you, I do have uh, scrolls you may be able to use of the sending spell, but I can send it for you if you require. I'm afraid I can only send 25 words at a time, um, but I can let her know. If you can construct a message of 25 words, I can send it as you need. Um, that goes for all of you. If you do wish to send any messages, I have the spell ready. 
I do need to know who I'm sending it to. I've tried to send it to yourselves in the past, but perhaps you were somewhere where magic wasn't working. A few situations where it might not have. Perhaps some just poor timing on my part. Um, Yes, Uh, eat, uh, grab lunch, whatever you need. Uh, I do have some business I need to attend to. Um, If you are going to go look for Sveria, make sure you gather supplies. Um, my scouts can at least show you the way to the, along the, the snow paths. Um, One final thing yes. before you go. Of course. I would like a word in private. Yes, of course. Uh, come with me. We'll, we'll make our way, Miss Jing. Um, he bows his head. Uh, you can come and find me if you need it. Where's the kitchen? <laughs> we will have food brought to you. Perfect. Yes. I'll be in the main lobby. As they, as he kind of like, Miss Jing, he kind of like gestures as he passes his servants. He's just like, if the human man asks for too much, just stop him. <laughs> and then just kind of tries to awkwardly head off. Uh, what did you wish to speak about, Miss Jing? A private matter for mm. you. The body of your sister. Mm. It is currently in the crypts of the Temple of Bah Bahamut in Talisvar. His eyes kind of open wide. Oh, thank you. I did not think that you would have brought it back to Tansvall. No matter what she became, she was still your sister. Yes, I believe very much corrupted by Salandris and his poisonous messaging, and that's very good to know. Um, very good to know. Yes. He kind of like nods. Thank you for telling me, and thank you for looking after that. I need to make some difficult decisions regarding that, however. And he kind of gets lost in his thoughts. I, excuse me, and he just kind of peets off. Um, I'll rejoin him. What do you guys want to do? I'm waiting for food. Well, uh, they bring food out to you. It is pretty much break time, because we've got run to man's. So you want to take a break? Yeah, yeah probably sure. a good time to. Uh, just a quick, before Yay! we go on break, are you going to go off to find Sparrow? I want to hear his voice again. I don't well, know. It's up to you. Should we blow the horn and see if he arrives first? Yeah, see what happens. Uh, so yeah, if you go outside and blow it, nothing does happen. Uh, Wait. How, we've been there before, though. How long does it take to get to the Frost Giants? A day. Do we Under. Have a day? We will decide in the break. Yeah. Decide in the break. We're yeah. going to take a break. We'll join you after that. See you later. Bye, bye for now. Bye-bye. Don't go anywhere. Bye-bye. Oh, oh, click.
Oof. Hello, welcome back to High Rollers, where nobody's decided what to do. <laughs> oh yeah. Welcome back. Tom, you were uh, outside. <laughs> as a quick reminder, don't forget, check out Insomnia 62, we're going to be doing a live show. Details <coughs> in our pinned tweet at the top of oh. High Rollers uh, D&D Twitter. Yeah, it's, it's the video, yeah, the video. <laughs> 
Um, and then also, uh, you can also pick out these new awesome High Rollers hoodies. I've got one on. Ooh, and there's a cool design snug. on the back, which I can't show you, but it's on store.yogcast.com. Um, so you should check those out as well. Back into the game. Yeah. The party are currently at the Winter Spire up north in the Troubled Lands, where they've been speaking with Nalistri, who is currently the steward of the Spire, Basically. about what to do. Um, and you have a decision to make. I thought you said you have a decision. And you have a decision <laughs> to make. Uh, what would you like to do next? It's um, you discussed the idea of possibly trying to track down Sferia. You have uh, you stepped outside, have blown the hunting horn that he gave you, and said that he would come come and answer. Um, you blow it. You wait like an hour. Nothing. Nothing. The hell. So what is this horn meant to do? Summon, Summon the, frost the frost giant. Yeah. Said so that when but, when they sounded it, he would try and come. But last time we met him, he was trying to get back in. Like he was sort of rejected from his tribe, so he was a kind of a loner. And mm. I think he might have been if he's been reabsorbed into his tribe because he was having a trial to join them again. Then maybe he doesn't have control of. I mean, having having Stereo and the giants versus cloud giants and. Who knows what else kind of giants would be very useful. It would be very useful to have them on our side. So and I'm... they are on our checklist. They are I'm... on our list. When I say a day, by the way, that is a sort of like day there and back. Okay. All together? Yeah. Oh, okay. That I, I thought I know it would about be like the, I think I did a roll a while back on the, almost like a hierarchy of giants. Mm -hmm. We so already I... know. Yeah, you already know it. And I guess, yeah, I was just well, are you, Would you like to know where they place in the ordning? Well, yeah. I suppose, yeah. yeah I think you would a... know this. It's basically, um, it goes storm giants, cloud giants, I think fire giants, frost giants, stone giants, hill giants. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if, would they actually join us in a fight against giants that are... It affects the whole of the Dawn Republic, so... It's kind of like ultimately... humans fighting other humans. They fight for a good cause or a different cause, then they'll fight. They, sure. They're still going to have a, a cloud giant try, try and rule over them. So ultimately, it does affect them because they live in the Dawn Republic. So, um, can I get out those spell cards? Shuffle through all of them. Can you track giants? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I can. I can would like I, to do um, that. You look around, there's no giants here. <laughs> you kind of need tracks to track giants. Whoa. Uh, well, Mark. Go on. Hang on. I use primeval awareness. Okay, what are you going to say? Why are these reading? Scry. You want to scry on Korak. On Korak. Okay. I want to see what's happening in Talisfell. Okay. So, scry. Yeah, boy. To scry. To scry or not to scry? Radar. That's the question. Scry. So the giant's footprints are really big. I imagine, thank you, Mawai. Um, you, you know the target well, yep. so save modifier minus five. And they make this beautiful song. <laughs> Likeness of picture, position of garments, you don't have any of those, so it's just a minus five to be saving throw. What's your spell save, DC? 18. 18. Uh, he will now have a class. Oh, oh idiots. Just the thought of it. I can't imagine it being quite high pit. I assume so. <laughs> Almost bird -like. Doesn't help when he rolls a one, though. <laughs> I didn't like it. I didn't it's not very good if that was for Lorian scrying on you, is it, Korak? Um, so, you bring out the crystal ball. It takes you, I think, ten minutes to cast the spell. So, you sit in sort of one of the lavish kind of rooms of the, the Winter Spire. The Lord pulls out the crystal ball, sets it on a little sort of stand, and you begin watching as she focuses her energies, hands kind of wrapped around it. The mist begins to swirl and form. Now, let me think about timing here. He's not on the toilet, is he? Has it been a few days? Two hours. Oh, do you look great, He's not topless wearing high-waist pants. Just, I really need to think, guys. <laughs> Shut up a second. He's not with Amarillo, is she? Been is he? For about an hour. Depends the time of day. Okay, He's you dead. see Korak. Uh -oh. He watches his form materializes, and you see him kneeling at the altar of Bahamut in the temple of Bahamut. Cassandra, uh, many of the other paladins and priests, you can see in the crystal ball, are stood around him along with Lady Amarelith by his side. 
you see him holding out full the dawn shard, uh, dawn blade, his sword, and he's kneeling. Um, and the priest is speaking to him. You can't hear what's being said. Um, you see him sort of like speaking over Korak. Um, and they bring up a pitcher, which is kind of shaped like a dragon claws, holding up like a chalice bowl. And they sprinkle water over Korak's head. Um, and the paladins all kind of give a salute. Korak lifts the blade up, stands, and then they present him with a badge which bears the symbol of Bahamut, the, the uh, platinum dragon. And he attaches it to his armor, and then he salutes back in the same way as the paladins. Oh. It's like he's just joined them. I, uh, I mean, you can make uh, religion, religion checks. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Uh, you can have advantage, Reynard, because you read through the prayer book of Bahamut. I did. Doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> Fifty. Fifteen. That's not bad for Cam Buckland. Religion. <laughs> religion. religion. I got thirteen. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> you say? Nineteen. <laughs> Just yeah. Uh, Nineteen. Uh, Elora and Cam. Actually, you, Cam, you recognise it more in that you recognise similarities to kind of priestly kind of teachings and rituals that you would have learnt from Gramps, uh, from your old uh, the old granddad of the the Buckland family. Um, the kind of this is clearly an initiation rite. It is a dedication rite. Um, Elora, you probably recognise this more from like the certain tales. This is this is this is Korak pledging loyalty and allegiance to Bahamut. Is is him being dedicated to the faith of the Platinum Dragon? Um, um, judging with your nineteen, judging by the fact that it's more paladins than priests, uh, Lady Amarillith and the head priest are there, but. This looks like he's joining the Order of Paladins. This looks like he is joining and swearing an oath to become a Paladin of Battle. Lord knows that, I do. Yeah. You just recognise this that. is a dedication to a god. So does that mean... Can he be a Paladin and also a champion at the same time? I don't, I don't fully understand. Is he... Uh, you also, in continuing the vision as you're watching, um, as they all kind of salute, uh, Korak and Lady Amarillith join hands in front of everybody for the first time as well. Like they, you, he kind of holds out a clawed hand. She kind of takes it in her sort of more delicate human hand. Um, that must be part of the, the, the rite, the dedication, obviously. And you see Cassandra kind of gives him a very respectful sort of nod and bow. He actually bows very deeply to Cassandra um, and she actually kind of crests his shoulders with her sword. Like she's her, his, his superior. It does seem that way. Wow. It looks to me as if he is preparing to fight, but not as the champion. Maybe he's... Champion or not, there is going to be a fight, and he, as long as he's prepared to fight, then... I am more concerned by the fact that it looks like he has given up all claims to the council. Mm. Which means he must have failed to rally the people. What? Or the council are locking all doors. If the council are in control of Talos Vile, they might have accepted Falania's deal. Oh. Oh. In which case, we don't have much time. Yeah, you don't know at this point. Like, this is, unfortunately, the way that Scram works, you can literally see this point inside the Temple of Bahamut. You have no other knowledge. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, hmm. But nothing's on fire yet. There in wasn't the fire. It's it's still does, it looks very calm. And I again, will say that much. Watching this, this is a very calm. Yeah. This isn't like a rushed ceremony. This is ritualistic. This is meaningful. I don't suppose there's any way, like we could see in Korak's face, if it was something that he. I, I, you know, he's obviously choosing to do it, but if he's, see, anything, he's smiling. He's smiling. That dragonborn smile. It's like kind a, of a very proud, yeah. like thin lips, like kind of closed mouth. He looks, he looks calm. He looks peaceful, but he seems happier. He seems happy in his being, and especially when he looks at Amaryllis. Perhaps it is a union. What? No. <laughs> really? <laughs> like say, nah. It's a ritual. She's like the, she's a dragon. Yes, Lady. she's a dragon. And he's a dragonborn. Yeah. It's not that. Strange, surely. She, it's... She's got a thing for me. I, I, I'm, I've got to say it. I'm going to make it loud and clear. She's I think like me the from thing she has for you is tolerance. <laughs> Barely. 
They look very happy together. Tolerance. They do. What does that mean? We'll tell you later, it's okay. Well, either way, he seemed happy. Well... Cassandra's there too, which is good. Which means she's still in the temple. Uh, not being called out to fight anything. Well, we know with Felania's deal, it was... They either accept her into the city and she doesn't destroy it, or she takes it and destroys it. If, if he's no longer the champion... Mm. Did you remember, in her deal, it's on the condition that Korak would be killed. Like, she would take control yep. of the city without a fight, but kills Korak, basically, as part of that. Um, oh. It's, she did yeah, specify she that. Out Korak specifically. <coughs> and this is when he's making... Well, she explained that he's seen as too much of a figure. Like, yeah. he's seen as too much of a heroic figure that she needs to snuff out rebellion, basically. And he is now currently making a... Paladin closer claim oaths. to a god. I mean... Maybe I'm reading into it too much. <laughs> Maybe. I, I can't give you any hints yeah, either no, way, so I'm just... D don't infer anything from my Reactions. being. I don't Never think. do. How damaged does he look? <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, that got me. That got me. <laughs> what? He we suffered saw. 2d10 of love damage. Oh. <laughs> Shot to the heart and she's to blame. Yeah. <laughs> I would say we still go and see Sphere. Because Sphere. As much as this this means nothing, in my opinion. This means that he's now he's now, he's now worshipping a god. Cool. Well done. Korak, that's nice. He can smile. I didn't know he could do that. That's great. But we need people on our side. We need giants to fight the impending doom. On the other hand, I don't think we have two days to waste. But it's a day there a and day. back. It's a day. A day there could and back. Could we not travel directly to Talisval from um, the find a tree. camp? Yeah. yeah, find a tree. So it would only be a day, and then we'd be in Talisval. Half a day. Half a day. What's the if time we go of to day at the moment? Uh, it's quite early. That's Still the quite early. It's so, like 11 a.m. So if we were to, if we were to go there. Travel from there to Talisval. You'd be looking at We'd early be, evening. We'd uh, arrive in the evening. Same day. To catch up Same with day people. of their ritual. Wedding. It's not a wedding. We don't know what it is, to be fair, at the moment. But if it was, then that's... He was being sworn into the teachings and fealty of Bahamut. Yeah, it's just becoming a paladin. And he can be open with Amaryllis now because he's no longer the champion. What do you mean open with? Huh? He's always been an open book. He's just a man. Dragonborn man. That wants to save Talos Val. Nothing more! Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go see Sferia. You should perhaps inform Lystri as to our plans. Yes, if we're going to go. As we may go. not return before we go to Talos Val. Oh, yeah. Damn it. It would be useful to use the teleportation circle, but. Okay. We can swell. Yeah. No, it would take too much time. Yeah. Why do you keep looking at me, Mark? I like looking at all four of you. I feel very proud. <laughs> what? Like a father. And that's where the art comes from. <laughs> oh, yeah! Us little what? children, and yeah. you're, the, oh, you're the parent. That was amazing art. Yeah, Dungeon Daddy. Dungeon <laughs> Daddy. Oh, oh, you've just made it weird. Yeah, no, I didn't make it weird. Other people made it weird. <laughs> G Star made it weird. She's the one Damn that started it, that. G Star, it's weird. It is okay. weird. Okay, right. So, what's the plan? Talk to Nasal Tree. We'll, all right, calm we'll be, yourselves. We'll be here. All right, calm, down. We'll be getting uh, supplies. I've still not got my food. I'm you have to... had food. You have had food. I've taken oh, no, like my 10 second minutes course. to do that. So. He hasn't had second breakfast yet. I haven't had second <laughs> breakfast. You 11 cents. Food. You're clapping. Yeah. You, like, nobody I, brings you any bring clap, them. but when you go and find somebody, they bring you more food. I'm clicking now. I will go and get supplies. Okay. Just like food, water. water. Like warm, cloaks warm, warm and stuff, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah warm easy. stuff. Yeah, you yep. need to get warm stuff. Given your like reputation, I'm not going to make you spend like the four or five gold that it would cost to do that. They just give it to you. We'll cool. be right here, Alora, in the lobby, ready to go. Did I get this armor after the long rest or before? 
Uh, it's not it needs to be adjusted. Yes. Yeah, we need I to like... I was just wondering if I was attuned to it or not. No, it doesn't require attunement. That's yeah. the thing. We that that, that armour is you. just made of adamantium. There is no real magical benefit. It's just whoever wears it Super has strong. the adamantine effect. Hmm. But okay. you, need a, you need to uh, get Take yes. it to Enoran. No, no he's person. not an armourer. But we do need to go to Enoran with the, the dummy. 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 You could leave it with an armourer here, yeah. Elven Smiths can probably but start that, working. Yeah. If, I, yeah. if I spoke to someone there, oh yeah, how long would it take? Quite a while, depending. Yeah, yeah. forget it. it. Forget it. That's a talus file project. It's a talus file project. Waiting for Laura. Okay. What are you okay. doing, Laura? I'm going to find Lily Street. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you find him probably um, sort of in the library. Uh, his kind of favorite place to be. Like, there's books strewn everywhere. Like these kind of like tall racks of books, like bookshelves. But the windows are open, and he's actually kind of stood out, sort of like looking over like the sort of like troubled lands. Um, sort of no, no, like not cold airs breezing in, thanks to the magic of the spire. It's just quite calm and peaceful. So magic. He's like, so, are you all ready to leave? Yes, we're going to see if the frost giants want to join us, <coughs> but. I don't would be know. very useful allies. I saw what that Sferia did. He took down our walls quite quickly, so if you can get oh, yeah, his, him and his allies' help, that would be very useful, I'm sure. I don't know if I... For the sake of time, we should get back to Talisfal, so I think I'm going to use my magic to get us directly there. He like just nods. He's like, yes, of course. It makes the most sense. Uh, still, uh, well... Good luck with everything. Uh, if you need us, if you can find a way to contact me, I, I can be there in an instant. It doesn't, I, I'll, keep, I'll keep the spell prepared if you need us. Not that we'll be a large force, but we might be able to help in some way. Um, Anything is useful. The fact that you've already helped us with the Everseed is very useful yes. because we were just carrying it around. It's our duty as guardians of the Feywild. That's what we're here to do. We need to make sure that this... We need to make sure that things like Solandris never happen again. And if I can secure the Everseed and prevent it from falling into the wrong hands, then so be it. Um, well, good. Uh, he just kind of like nods his head. Just, just so you know, and I know I read your letter back, just nothing's changed for me. If I'll always be here. And he just kind of holds his hands up and gestures. I've got a lot to do. Um, and it's not like I have many people to distract me, so uh, yes. Um, um. It's fine. You, you, you don't need to say anything, or it's fine. It just kind of turns his back. So sort of. I don't know what's going to happen yeah. in Talisfell. I don't know if I'm going to survive Talisfell. There turns are... back around <laughs> when you say that. A... There's a lot going on against us that I, I don't know if we can overcome it. We've done what we can, but I'll try this time and keep you more informed. Please do. And I think you will overcome it. You are, you are the best of all of us, I think. I think you have certainly shown me a lot of things about the world I didn't quite appreciate. And you have proven yourself in terms of strength time and time again. And I, in my heart of hearts, I do not believe that you will fail or fall. And certainly I hope not. And I wish there was more I could do. I wish there was more I could do to help you specifically, but shh, I just It's helpful it for me that my parents and that you stay away from harm. He kind of like looks Go up. Away. He like looks up and sort of like takes a few steps forward and just nods his head. I swear to you, nothing will happen to your parents. I will do everything I can to protect them. If you can give my father that distraction so that <laughs> he doesn't try anything stupid. Yes. I will lock him in a prison of ice if I have to. That sounded a lot stranger <laughs> than I intended it to be. I meant that I will make sure he doesn't do anything <laughs> stupid without incarcerating him in magic prisons. I mean, to be honest, 
sometimes it might be it might be necessary. He does do reckless things. <laughs> well, at least I have your permission for that. Um, and he just kind of steps forward, but doesn't come too close. Um, and just sort of like with his ice hand, he kind of just touches the sort of tabletop of like a large writing desk, and his arm sort of falls away for a moment. Um, and reverts to sort of like just this kind of like little bit of dull ice around the sort of like injury that he had, like this missing hand, and a uh, one like very similar to the moon flowers you often create with druid craft. He creates one out of ice, but it doesn't seem to melt. It just kind of stays in place, and he just leaves that. He doesn't hand it to you, but he just says, "Keep that with you at least." And then sort of as he steps away, the ice hand reforms, um, and just sort of like nods, just as a so you know that I'm looking out for who you care about. I'll put my hand on the table and druidcraft the flower mm -hmm. with same my magic, one. the same so one. So this time this, an actual real one sort of appears. You can see him smile and he just nods. I promise I'll try and keep in contact better. Please do. And I'll come back when... Otherwise I will quite literally fly into Talisval to find you. I can do that now. I can, I can fly. Again, sounded far more awkward, um, and he just kind of nods. I'm just going to go up and give him a really, like, really quickly, just yeah. give him a peck on the lips and then just walk out. Just, he's in pretty stunned silence, um, but then as you're kind of making your way, the ice rose flies past and just sort of like hovers in front of your face for you to take it with you kind of thing. Like, he just kind of whoosh, launches it that way with magic. Um, and I'll just take it, and smile just, at him and then... Yeah. And then you leave, and then there you go. That's it, there you go. What's that? Tiny clapping from little pinky there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, so what's next? Oh, it's not cold while the cockles of my heart are all warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, he's genuinely happy about it. So he doesn't right. even know the least. Really. Look at so him, right. I've never seen you so happy about stuff. Sure. Yeah, that's good. So she so said, so you know what she said to me in the break? He was described as Tom Hiddleston. Just go and kiss him or I will. Tom yeah. Hiddleston haircut. Yeah. He's, a not, he's not as... Don't he's care. a little bit geeky. Don't he's care. a little bit... A bit Don't care. Like a geeky Don't Tom care. Hiddleston. Right. Anyway. So, you guys are going to journey towards the Frost Giant camp. Dark. Tuto, I think my balls just dropped. Or well, something happened. What? I feel like... <clears throat> Your balls? And I look around to see if I can find... I'm like juggling balls or something, I guess. Like you probably. Were look... you practicing your juggling? You're the wrong person to talk to about that. Never mind. It's fine. Elora That's... joins you. Oh. Cam has lost his balls. Mm. What? I just felt a feeling, you know. I felt a feeling. It felt nice. I'm gonna use my moon bow to conjure an unseen <clears throat> servant with grapes. <laughs> oh, like follow. <laughs> no follow. way. This is what you could do that. I could do that too. <laughs> just has a bowl, like picks up one of the bowls. Hey, come back. Man. <laughs> it always just manages to stay like five feet ahead of you. Like, oh, stop it. <laughs> just a little nimble. <laughs> Number seven. It's a really useful trick to get rid of him. <laughs> uh, you guys make your way out into the frozen lands. Wastes. So the troubled lands. They're not quite waste. There's fir trees. You see the occasional sort of like um, iced kind of, not a river, but like a stream. Um, mainly covered over in, in frost now. Occasionally you see like an antelopes or like like deer jumping around, uh, leaping out the way. And you begin making your way. The three of you vaguely know your way, but it's been a while. And Reynard is kind of your main sort of like, we don't get lost magically because I'm a ranger. So I would like the three of you to make survival checks. Right. Ooh. Ooh. Is this to find? This is to remember the way back to where they need to go, not to find tracks. Uh, 25. Laura can do it quite easily. <laughs> 13. 13? 19. 19. Not so, bad. between all three of you, and especially with Laura, um, it's really not hard to just get your bearings and start figuring out the way back towards this path. You remember it being actually quite near the coast um, because they had sort of like a crashed longship that they had built a lot of their kind of yeah. camp out of. Um, and as you begin descending down, you kind of have to weave you through. And you do notice that this land is very beautiful. Um, you occasionally hear sort of like the yipping of gnolls, these kind of hyena creatures out in the distance, but they don't ever come close enough to be a threat. Um, not that they would be a threat to level 13 characters at all, but uh, yeah, you get the point. The As you kind of crest, you begin to kind of take... Uh, 
you step over like a hill looking down into a bay. And you know that down in this bay is where the Vikings, uh, where the Vikings, the <laughs> Frost Giants. Vikings. They are basically Vikings. The Frost Giants camp was. And you begin to get the sense that something isn't quite right because no, you can no. see the giant gates that they built out of the hull of the ship. One of them has been ripped, part of it's broken off, like a big sort of chunk of wood pulled How away from big? it. Pretty big. Does it look like a giant's work or a beast's work? Is there like difficult to tell? Yeah, there's, some, there's some claw marks, but okay. you're not sure if those were like sharp like implements or if they were like claws necessarily. It's within five miles, I assume. Yes. Can I use primeval awareness to see if I can sense any giants? In what does? Let me just read the book a minute. Take my spell book. I want to read how this ability actually works. It's a little works. bit creased from the rainwater. Yeah. The flood. flood. The great <laughs> floodening of the Ox cast. <laughs> Floodening. <laughs> okay, any of your favoured enemies? And yeah, giants, okay. beasts, monstrosities. Okay. Um, you do not... Actually, you detect one very faint giant. Uh, one, and whereabouts? Down in the camp. Um, mm. And how many giants are meant to be here again? A whole, whole, whole tribe. A whole tribe, okay. Why? There's just one down there. Oh. Uh, could I do some sort of... How close are we to the gate? Hmm? How close are we to the gate? Oh, you're probably sort of like... It's just down, I'd say maybe like a 15 sort of minute sort of like jog. I don't know, like walk, slow walk. So, you know, several hundred feet away still. But we've all seen the... If something Scratched. you can see, like it's in the distance, you can see like this, like chunk of it's been torn off. If something's happened to the giants, where there's only one left, do we want to continue this? Um, it could well be. It that could be the broken sky have gotten here before we. Well, like I said, the cloud giants are superior to the these yeah. giants. It could be they've come round to gather as many as they can, force them if they need to. There's still one down there, though. Or if he's in danger, or he's dying, or she. They could be in danger still. You could find out. You say you had a, mm -hmm. some, how do you track it? How do you know? Mm -hmm. He just does. I just do. I, it's difficult it's to say without, with being. Because he's not quite a magical ranger, so it's always tricky. I think it would just be like, I don't know, you can smell it, like you're like. I can listen to smell a giant. I can down. hear a giant just. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> At some point. <laughs> Reynard Sonar. Um, so what's the plan? I broke my pencil. Due to. I can sense their general direction as well. Are they moving? Wait, are they... You've got a ring of invisibility. Yeah, I'm going to go invisible. I'm going. I'm I'll join. I'm going to go invisible. Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to cast past that trace on the group. Do, we, okay. do, we, do you want us to come with you, or are we going to reveal ourselves? Well, I don't think... I so don't you want to so just correct what you're thinking here, Cam Buckland. You would like you and Reynard to remain 15 minutes away from yeah. Aurora and Juto. I see, I feel like this is a very loaded question. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not a loaded question at all. Party. I want to go in there. <laughs> I don't. I think we, well, then well, you can stay there. Let's approach, and then when we get closer, or sense people around, then we can evaluate what we're going to do. If but something we're still bad quite... happens, you can just feign death again. Do not do that again. I can do that. Mm -hmm. I will I leave you. <laughs> so what's the plan? Fine. Oh, just be why? really, really quiet. Where's the nearest trees? Uh, not far away. The beach is kind of clear of any trees and stuff like that. Pretty much where you are at this sort of kind of like this kind of mountainous cliff face kind of descending down. There's some pine trees and that up here. So about 15 minutes away. But that's like a walk pace. You could probably run up here quicker. Right, so where we are now, there's like trees, yeah. but then if we get down. Yeah. In and out. Quicker than, no, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> I can Let's... hear what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's so loud, your thoughts. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> What Let's go. You... Okay. So what? Stealth? You could, so pass you without could... a trace? I think, yeah, if we all sneak down there. I want so to investigate the gate. 
checks. Wanna... Stealth checks. Uh, with pass. Yeah. With pass. <laughs> with pass. Yep. Thirty. Um. I'd use this passive. Invisible as well. Um. I mean, you can cast invisibility. Yeah. You still make stealth checks though, because it can affect mm -hmm. your if stuff can hear you. Twenty-eight. Okay. I have to add plus ten, don't I? With that? Yes. Okay, so twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. So you begin Ugh. slowly because moving at stealth, you slow down as well. It takes you about half an hour to just creep down, sort of like skirting the edge of like the mountains, trying to stay in like the cover of like these kind of rocky outcroppings. Um, as you get closer down towards the beach, the sand becomes, it's not quite sand, it's almost like a fine gravel. Um, and you're trying to keep your footing from like making crunching noises using the outcroppings. As you get closer and closer to the gates, maybe about 20 feet, 30 feet away from the main gates themselves, you see a number of things. The first, the camp is in ruins. Um, large chunks of wood ripped free from the large boat that they once built their camp around. You can see tents have been shredded, um, some of them smoldering, almost like they've been set on fire. Um, great big blasts, like scorch marks around. And then you see bodies, frost giants. Several of them look like they were uh, mid-combat, you know, spears in their hands. Their bodies have been sort of like torn with giant claws. Some of them have been, you know, their bodies have been scorched by like an intense uh, burning, but very quickly and in very sort of like specific locations on their bodies. Um, and then you begin to see Curled around one of the buildings, which you knew belonged to the Thane, the Jarl, you see a scaled blue reptilian sort of arm oh, cool. and a large tail and a large set of wings and then a huge draconic maw as a blue dragon <laughs> sleeps um, at the foot of its, like pinned underneath a claw, you see Sverrier. Mm -hmm himself like his bow is broken next to his hand howl is dead like no, beside him like completely why? shredded but you can see his eyes are barely fluttering like he's he's alive but barely um what is that dragon thing <laughs> what the it, fuck do we do is that something you know of is, is no it... it's a big dragon I'm whispering, but I'm doing it for the audience. <laughs> the claw marks around the camp, I guess that matches just the, the, the thing. It does. As Reynard, you got 21 right, you and Juto. Yeah. As the two of you mm, lean ever so slightly closer, invisible. you're invisible, but your foot just catches a little bit of gravel. So the sound is barely anything, like a faint And you watch as the moor. <laughs> <laughs> so, who has come? And his eyes fully open, and it begins to stretch its body like a cat, arching its back, stretching out its limbs, each claw in its free hand, the other still pinning Sferia in place. Um, the creature is massive, it's it's about the same size as, as a frost giant itself, but it seems to be incredibly strong. And you can just see kind of crackles of lightning sparking around its huge jawed teeth. Its tail... Is it bigger than the green dragon we fought ages ago? Yeah. Cool! Yes. Mm. She said that you might come. He can't see me. He can't see me. I'm invisible. She. I'd like to hide in plain sight, please. Okay, make a stealth check. <laughs> I mean, so I can, it just it affects their perception. What does it do? Minus 10 to their perception to, 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 to spot me. <laughs> Cunning little worms, aren't you? <laughs> you think that you can hide with your magic, but I can still smell you, human. <laughs> Um, it picks up and you hear Sferia like, um, it just picks him up as the creature's wings begin to 
as it rises up into the air. Um, it drops Feria, who collapses. You can see like it's a bad fall. Like he watches his eyes kind of roll in his head. Again, he's still alive, but barely. Um, and it begins flying through the air. Um, that's going to be initiative, oh. everybody. Well, yeah, I didn't we really expect. We like, go. <laughs> oh, where's, no. the, where's the nearest tree? <laughs> Back where we came. Oh, double 17. Oh, right. So how big is this thing, did you say? Fucking huge. Massive. That's uh, giant. It is a huge creature. And what would it be classed as? Monstrosity? Dragon. Just yeah. dragon. It's its own thing. Cool. Just making sure. Um, big bugger. Big. Great. You used to have a dragon slaying sword, didn't you? Didn't, oh, didn't you fuck's sake. <laughs> Don't blame this on me. <laughs> and it had lightning coming through its mouth as well. It did, yes. Sweet. Um, so, that is... What's your initiative, Cam Buckland? 11. 11. Elora. 10. Reynard. 21. Juto. 22. Juto, what would you like to do? Oh, so, to give you an idea, um, you've got a large kind of bay cove, um, which does have like this protective gate, um, which the Frost Giants camp was in. Um, with the shore, and you can hear the lapping of the waves kind of right next to you. To get the climb back to where you were, where you know the trees are, is probably, if it was about a 15 minute walk, running at full pelt, um, you'd probably be looking at sort of like two minutes, it's full sprint to reach. Quicker for you, because you've got faster movement speed. Um, it's, yeah, it's quite far. It's What's the probably distance? 60, I'm just working it out, 60 feet in my hand. 600 feet, about 1200 feet. Because you need to get there in two minutes. That's so twenty speed. rounds. <laughs> if you don't use magic to increase your speed and things like that, like well, beacon what... dimension door five hundred feet and is stuff it, like is that. that 20, so is that twenty rounds? It would be if you were to just double sprint it the whole time. If you were just to run up towards the thing, um, that's kind of like, and it's uphill as well. So it's you know, well. and it's made of like this kind of scree, so it's difficult to scrabble up. Um, and yeah, this creature just flaps into the air. You're not sure if it if it knows where you are. Um, you're not sure. You can smell it. It's about sixty feet away. <laughs> that means Sveria is as well, right? Sveria is also about sixty feet. Roger. Holy um, shit! Fuck. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> shit. Uh, what would you like to do? I don't know. Um, so I, are you delaying your turn? I would like to ready an action. Okay. If it seems like he's coming towards me, like he's seen through my invisibility, mm -hmm. um, I would like to dash for cover. Okay, sure. So like behind one of the big, raw, large, rock out, rocky outcroppings. Yeah, There's a few of them scattered around. Anything that can cover me, okay. basically. So you can like duck behind um, one. Okay. Yeah. Very Underneath. Nice. So it can't get me from above. I mean, I'm gonna... Uh, there's not really any way you can get under, so it can't like... There's like rocks you could hide behind, which would give you cover in the game mechanic sense, but not really like a full covering. Not like a like a roof covering always. So we were looking around something to see that. It was basically like, it was just you adjusting your position to get a better look, and it just, it was your stealth checks were lower than its passive position. Well, I guess my high bar trace, I ducked down and just it, After it became aware that you were there, yeah, yeah you've kind of ducked down. You've so hidden. I am behind cover at least, in which case I want to Hunter's Market. Okay. And again, if I ready an action and it's an attack, do I still get two shots? No, if you ready an action to attack, that's your whole action. No, I mean, uh, when if that ready action then triggers, do I get the two shots? Yes, I will say you. In will. that case, yes. same as Juto, if it comes towards us, which it will, yeah. I want to shoot it twice. Okay. Okay. Um, at the end of your turn, it's going to use a legendary action uh -huh. and a perception check. Uh -huh. Which has got minus 10 on me. It does have minus 10 on you. It's kind of a AoE for everyone, really. Yeah, but yeah. it kind of like, it's sniffing the air. Seems to vaguely know, but it's, yeah, this is what it's doing. So at the end, so Elora, what would you like to do? No, sorry, Cam. I would like to cast level six heal on Sphere. Yep. 60 foot range. 60 foot range, how many hit 70. points? 70. 70 hit points. Oh man. Whoa. Sphere. Whoa. 
Oh That's what I'm fucking That's doing. Crazy. That's great. That's Should Cam Buckland way. Points? Wait, be the oh, hero. Oh. So, mm -hmm. on Sverier, yeah? Destroyed an entire town. And how much was it again, sorry? 70. So that brings him up to 75. So what was the thing that you said was dead next to him? His how oh, a large direwolf, like a big head. white direwolf. Oh, right. He was cool. awesome, uh, he helped He could talk to uh, him. Sverier's eyes, like, open. Um, and he kind of like glances over you casting the spell is a somatic thing and as soon as you kind of cast it the dragons <laughs> yeah uh, sees you Sverius eyes like open and he's like <gasps> run get out of here now I'll say the same thing um, I'm gonna use... and he's desperately scrabbling he's like trying to pick himself up I'm gonna start running back up the hill 30 feet so you just start pegging it up the hill 30 feet. So that's going to get rid of your stealth completely, basically. Because you're running full speed. He saw the spell. He knew where you were. He doesn't exactly know exactly where you are right now, but he's kind of got a vague idea of where you are. I'm Which is running. quite close to all Okay, the rest, so you start. So Cam just starts busting up to run. Um, okay. Uh, Elora. I don't know what to do. Um, I'm going to run with Cam, I think. Okay. Um, yeah. So you're just going to dash or are you going to cast a spiel? I'm going to... Can I run and then prepare an action if it gets closer You can do your normal me. movement and then take yeah, an action so to ready, yeah? I'll, I'll ready, I'll ready Blight if he okay. comes within sure. that. Sure. Basically flies towards In you. range, yeah. Okay. Well, on his turn, uh, at the end of your turn, he will make another perception check. Um, doesn't beat either of you guys. Um, at which point he will... No, it's still not enough. Um, he, the dragon... <sighs> <sighs> So you have decided to run very well. And begins flying towards your Blight Orc trigger. Um, he's not flying towards you guys specifically, but I would say so uh, he can funny. hear you because you're running and he has blind sight. So he can actually just detect where you are. Um, if you had stayed still, he wouldn't have picked it. So you two, he doesn't seem to know where you are and he's focusing on the two he can now hear and see. Um, you can still choose to do your actions, but technically they haven't triggered yet. But I'll leave it up to you. But your blight's going to go off, so that's a what? Con save for me? I think it is, yeah. Sure, yeah. That is going to be a fail. It's too close. Um, oh. Which I will see if he determines how bad this will be. Is that be an intelligence check? Yeah, he will use a legendary resistance to save instead. Fair, but it's half damage. Fair. Where are you going? Oh, shit. Away. Uh, That's all right. That's pretty good. 19. 30, so he takes half of 15. that. 15. He failed. Uh, no, he, he failed. He used a legendary resistance. Oh, He's got legendary resistance. So as you kind of like, as you're running, you kind of rush, you throw your hands upwards and you kind of curl it into this claw-like shape. Um, and you watch as the dragon kind of, as you watch as it begins pulling the very life force from him. Oh. I was going to capture you for Falania, but now I'll kill you instead. Oh. And it takes a deep breath Easy to and convince, lightning blasts towards Bad. Cam and Elora. That is a dex saving okay, throw from okay. both of you, please. Whoop. The lightning seems to arc about 90 14. foot forward and just catches just the two of you. It basically catches you in a line, basically. 15. 14 and 15. Okay, you guys are going to take full damage on this one, I'm afraid. Can we was it like run? a cone or was it literally a bolt of lightning? It's, it's like a string. big, long bolt of lightning. Oh, nice. But it's like 10 feet, basically. It kind of goes like... Cool. Um, well, five feet wide, but it can catch you on either pretty side. pretty badass. Um, can I borrow everybody's D10s, please? Oh. No. Oh, no. Yeah. Everybody's. Uh, I need, oh, thank you. <laughs> How many? Uh, one, two, three. I need a lot more. Four. Uh, there's another two. Yep. Uh, oh, we're going to die. We <laughs> are actually, this could take us out. Seven. I don't know how we're going to get far enough. Oh away. my god. Just one more. 12 D10. 
Oh. We're dead. <laughs> 120. Boom! That's why I'm rolling it. Holy shit. Okay. And you're taking full damage from this? Yeah, we're fucked. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Can't be perma killed because I need 150 to be perma killed. Why I rolled exactly loud? average. Uh, that is 66 Fuck light healing damage. Cool. Um, you watch as this bolt just blasts through Elora and Cam, um, literally leaving them smouldering as the lightning just arcs away. Um, and uh, it just begins kind of its wings just beating in the air. Um, an eye for an eye. Uh, and then that is going to be Juto's go. <gasps> I mean, run. seeing that. Before Can't that happens, blind thing. should what I have taken a shot on my ready action? I don't know, because it didn't attack you. I know, but I still could have done, couldn't I? Technically, no, but I will let you if you want to. It'll happen at the same time as the lightning bolt, basically. Shall I? I wouldn't, but... You would, okay, I you're, wouldn't. You're Reynard, what would Reynard do? I feel like we're Reynard at the do? moment, so I probably wouldn't. I don't okay. want to trigger my overwatch. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, it's, uh, it's you two's go. Uh, so, from cover... Uh-huh. I'm gonna shout... Bargain! Okay. We'll, what are your terms? And just... What are you doing? 11. You've got 11 hit points. Mm. What? He's got uh, 11 hit points. Okay. So, uh, I need to roll initiative for Sverrier as well, actually. Sverrier. Sverrier. Okay. So, you l yell out bargain. Name your terms. Uh, and name your terms. And it kind of, you see it's kind of large draconic maw kind of crack into a smile. Um, is that all you want to do on your turn? You've come out of cover, you said, as well. No, no, stay. Uh, okay, staying stay in, cover. in cover. Yeah, I think I'm just going to still kind of like... Okay, yeah. so you kind of throw this out from sort of like hiding behind this rock, like, what are your terms? Uh, is that it? I guess we yeah. wait until his turn okay. to... Okay, give me a... Persuasion check. Sure. It's not really going to be opposed by anything, it's... 19. 19, okay. Reynard, what are you doing? Uh, it seems to be kind of, it kind of cocks sort of like a draconic eyebrow and its ears kind of flicker these kind of large holes with sort of like thorn spines, kind of bony spines around it and it kind of turns its head, kind of regards you with a sort of cocky smile. Still invisible. I am going to worse. say hunker down. Can I ask though, the um, yes. bronze griffin, when yes. it's summoned, does it actually look like a griffin or does it look, it looks, like a griffin? It looks like a griffin, yeah. Metal griffin, yeah. Oh, it looks like a metal griffin. Yeah, so it, it, it shines like, like glass, glass, yeah. 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 Big yeah. Bronze, 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 yeah. Bronze, yeah. Bronze Fair enough. Griffin. Don't worry, I'm just going to stay there and wait for the response. Okay, well I'll delay your action until the end of the turn then. Yeah, please. Okay. Thank um, you. Sverier and Cam, so Sverier gets up and he kind of like looks around because he can't see you and Reynard at the time, but he can see Cam. He doesn't know where Alora is. Uh, he just, he would probably, he'd be like, he like starts bounding over. He's like, no, don't. We tried to bargain with it. It's, it, it serves Felania. And he's like running. He's like, go. And he literally tries to run up and he's like looking around. He finds a large rock and he's just going to woof it, wing it at the creature's head. Um, oh, uh, that the rock just flies up, and it just kind of like hits the dragon scales and just, boom, and then swoosh into the water. It snaps its head round. It's like I left you alive because you amused me, giant. Do not take my mercy for granted, or I'll roast you like the others. Cam, what are you doing? I'm going Elora's to... Elora's next to you. You can see where the lightning's blasted Elora. Um, you're about I'm going 540 to... feet away from the tree line. I'm going to Dimension Doris. Okay. So you just grab Elora? Yeah, because we're... I'm going to look at Elora and look at her reaction. She's invisible. 
Would I be invisible if I cast a spell? Uh, so no. Actually, no, that's true. You cast a spell, so you're out of invisibility. Door! I don't know, Juto and Reynard, I'm like... Well, it's, it's your turn, Mike. That's pretty much what Elora can do in that in that brief amount of time. What does Cam do? Give me a Unless call. you can take all of us. How many people can Dimension Door take? Two. He can take himself and a creature of similar size. Let's go. Shit. I'm going to heal myself. Uh, <laughs> there's not doing? much I can do. What are you doing, man? You gotta make a final call, man. What's Sorry, the cam gonna have to rush do? you. I've gotta keep this moving. I'll heal myself while this bargaining thing's going on. So you just cast heal? Uh, no, not heal. Okay. It's gonna be healing word. That's a bonus level, action. Level four. Okay, so that's a bonus action. Plus wisdom. 17. Not okay. bad. 17. What are you doing for your main action? I'm going to... Oh, fuck. Cast Shield of Faith on myself. <laughs> that's, also, that's a bonus action. You can't it's cast it. It's a second it. spell, isn't it? So I can't oh, it's, it. it's a bonus action. You don't have two bonus actions. Oh, so you can't exchange can an action for a bonus action. action. No. It's a very specific rule. Hmm. Odd. Odd. Just because otherwise there's I'm some going to, stuff. as an action, invoke duplicity. Okay, so you create the illusionary double? Yes. Okay. I'm going to put 30 feet away from me. Okay. At the end of your turn, the dragon sees that you two are making a run for it. I haven't moved. <laughs> we haven't moved. No, but you were running on the previous turn. Like, it's blasted you with lightning, and it doesn't necessarily wear no those exactly where those guys are. It will basically just start beating its wings and it's just like, I did not give you permission to leave. Can you guys make uh, dexterity saving throws again? Yeah. I don't think there's going to be a lightning boy. It's not. He, um, I need to see if that recharges. Oh, that's on his turn. 20. 20. Okay, both of you, its wings are beating so strong, like it's trying to knock you to the ground. Um, you're actually going to, you don't even take any damage. Uh, you basically like, um, it tries to knock you down, but you manage to kind of like keep yourselves up and then it moves, uh, basically hovering over where it heard Juto's voice. Um, um, with its tail, it just kind of bats Ferrier, who kind of like stumbles a little bit. It doesn't quite injure him, but just kind of like knocks him. And then you hear this kind of deep voice um, kind of coming out. Mm, bargain, you say. <laughs> Kind of, Flania has offered me a great hoard of treasure to kill these giants, those that she called traitors, and to recover some pesky rodents that she thought might come your my way. What can you give me? Ah, uh, that's going to be Elora. I'm just going to heal myself. Okay. Cure wounds. Uh, on its turn. Okay, the lightning around its mouth hasn't returned, like the crackling lightning hasn't returned. Oh my god. Um, it just kind of like, it lands on the ground, looks around. This time its eyes kind of focus on roughly pretty much where you are. Ah, I smell you, tiefling. What do you and your little rodents offer? If you cannot match the giant's price, I could take it. You might serve as a meal. Do I just have six seconds to shout stuff or can we have a conversation? You can have a vague conversation about the same amount of what I just said. Mm, okay. Uh, why would a dragon as powerful as you take orders from a giant? However, I promise we will match her offer of gold and give you more. Okay. Uh, okay. So, it... <laughs> Did you not hear me, little tiefling? Did those ears of yours not work? She has not ordered me to do anything. 
she offers me great rewards. She understands my power. You can match her offer, you say. <laughs> perhaps you can, perhaps you can. You have many trinkets. I smell them on you and the human and the elf. Give them to me and I will retreat back to my lair. What specifically do you wish mm, for? Everything. And it just kind of like this huge tongue licks over its mouth. Uh, that is going to be your you go, Juto. It's pretty much part of your conversation, but it's you and Reynard. I'm going to keep you guys in this just in case it kicks off. What if we could offer you a counter offer? Speak, human. What if we knew of a particularly large treasure hoard held by Felania herself? <coughs> you don't know of the treasure hoard, do you? Are nope. you lying? A little, but she must have a great wealth or something. <sighs> but you don't know where it is, so it's a deception check. Oh. Good lord! Um, can I have advantage because I'm hidden? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's 11. 11, you say. Okay. Are you doing anything else on your turn? No. no. Okay. Does a 23 hit your armor class? <laughs> yes. Its huge tail comes. Whoosh, um, I will roll with advantage. With disadvantage. Uh, does a 18 hit your armor class? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to take. It's only 12 points of bludgeoning damage as this tail kind of wham! sends you flying, kind of like throws you back against the kind of wooden palisade of this uh, fort. Do not attempt to treat me as some fool. I have seen this world from before the light fall. I was once a king myself. Do not take me for a peddler of cheap tricks. <laughs> Cam Buckland, what would you like to do? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Man, I really wish I had the Everseed around about now. Sperrier, uh, <laughs> Sperrier kind of like looks over to Cam and Elora, and he's like, Go! I will fight it! Go! I'm going to... Do what you want. Ready my action to see what Sferi does. Uh, and what if, is you, you have to say what your action's gonna be. If he goes to attack the dragon, mm -hmm. and the dragon is sufficiently distracted by it, I will Dimension Door me and Alora away. Okay, okay. Sferi turns, and as the dragon has now landed to speak to Juto, he kind of takes a moment, he feigns like an injury from where it hit with the tail, um, and then he basically charges towards it and tries to leap onto it and sort of like basically grab its legs and kind of hold it down. And he's about the same size of this dragon. Like, the dragon looks a little bit stronger, but Sferi is also coming up from behind him. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like that I don't look. Like the look. Oh my god. You watch, the dragon like, goes, like turns around with a snarl. What are you doing? Sferi grabs its legs, and then he kind of basically uses the force of the ground. He kind of twists his body and he kind of almost like throws it over his shoulder, almost like a judo throw, and manages to get him prone, like basically grappling him. He's currently holding the dragon's claws in place and he's just like, go, go! And he's like wrestling around with this dragon on the ground. Jeez. And he does technically currently have it grappled. On one hand, we can go, on the other hand, it's grappled. But I did ready an action and I said it ahead action. of time. So. <laughs> You and Elora are about 60 feet away from the tree line, from the nearest tree. Um, oh, I hope they can get away. Elora. It's my go. Mm, it's your go. Bugger. I'm further away. Um, there's really not much more that I can do. 
Cora and the other guys at this distance, so I'm going to... Yeah, we're 500 feet away now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you, well, are, which you case, are 60 feet from the tree line. I'll you just are 500 get Cam, feet. I'll try and drag Cam with me as close to the trees as we can get in my turn, okay. using whatever movement yeah, I can. Yeah, you basically, because you're dragging him, you'll go at half speed, That's so you fine. get about 30 feet. Yeah, yeah. So you're about 30 feet 30 away, feet from, the away from the tree line. Pick me up like a little Due to doll. the <laughs> dragon angrily... Um, it, at the end of its turn, the only thing it can do is tail attack Sferia, which it will do. Um, it will hit him, but Sferia is fully, almost nearly fully healed, um, and he will take a little bit of damage, but not too much. Um, so it's kind of like thrashing Sferia with its tail, and it's like desperately trying to get its free, but it, it's not quite free yet. <laughs> that face. It's so difficult. Aww. Are we close to each other? Yeah, you guys you are. are basically next to each other. You're next to each other. Not in a second, though. No, because you're about to run off. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna Leave him. <laughs> I'm going to cut your wrist. You only need to, to be faster than the slowest person in the group escaping exactly, zombies, right? Yeah. Like, when being chased yeah. by a dragon, you just need to be faster than the slowest person. Yeah. This is this is how you go with your D&D party. Well, as a, if I'm faster than everyone else, yeah. it's fine. I'd like to cut Reynard's hamstring and then run. Okay. Uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, piss. I thought we could have talked our way out of that. Mm. I don't think it's a reasonable Literally, one. Yeah, you could have talked your way out by giving up all your golden magic items. Yeah. yeah. yeah sure, I don't have any. <laughs> um, you do. You've down. <laughs> You've got three, three magic items. I don't have any. I don't have any. I don't know what you're fucking talking about. <laughs> I was... just thought this whole thing. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? I... Fuck it then. Um... You fuck it. <laughs> don't distract her. Sorry. I want this to keep Sorry. going. Yeah. I'm just wondering whether or not to run or to like, I don't know. I want to get on the dragon and smack it in the head. It looks really, really strong, right? Super. It's pretty strong. And even you being said it's stronger like, than like, Sferia. barely did. It just okay. enraged it. Uh, I would like to. It looks S stronger than Sferia. Yeah, it's muscles. Stronger it's like than because it's got all four limbs that it can use. Like Sferia's only yeah. got two arms. Like, like this you thing know can that like frost giant strength is like my belt strength. And I it's tasted it once. Yeah. So, oh yeah, you did. You had that plan? portion. Uh, are, uh, is it a bonus action to? So move and then dash. For you, you can spend a key point. You yeah. can move, yeah, so you spend your action to dash, and then key point dash again. You could get um, So you can go 150 feet, I think, in But if turn. I go in air stance, yes. it means I'm unaffected by difficult terrain. That would pr help you s s scoop up the ski slope, yeah. Scoop up the ski slope. Scoop up the ski slope. Shoot up the ski slope. You yeah. said scoop up. Yeah, you try scoop saying up. shoot up the ski slope fast. <laughs> 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 no, no. Would not my unarmed movement allow me to go up vertical surfaces? Though? Oh yeah. Yeah, but this is not. Slippy. It's, it's Slippy. tiny pieces of gravel, so it's yeah. not like a solid surface. Okay, I would like to go into air stance, please. Air stance as well. When you use step of the wind, you get flying speed equal yeah. to your movement. So you basically just fly 150 feet. Yes, please. Mm. Whoosh! Crouching tiger style, you just kind of like drag the ball Z. Pretty, pretty cool. Whoosh, whoosh, and you launch yourself. Am I still enough. invisible? <laughs> oh, oh, no. Yes, yes technically, you. but yeah. Know. yeah. How much use that be uh, is against a dragon with blind sight? Oh, yeah. Every, Every little helps, helps me. Every little helps. Every little helps. Uh, Reynard. Uh, Eighty feet, isn't it? The Gryphon. How fast does it fly? How fast does it fly? I believe it's fifty feet. Is it because? I believe it's slow because it's made of metal, but I will check. Oh. Uh, a giant also? eagle flies at 80 feet. Yeah, that's a giant eagle there. Figurine of wondrous power. Does it also... Bronze griffin. Uh, it's just a griffin, which means I have to look up a griffin stat. I don't have a griffin stat, sorry. I do somewhere. I think it's like 120 feet. 120 feet per turn. Yeah, is it? Mm. This is weird. That's weird. Are you guys sure you don't just want to fight the, the blue dragon? Uh, pretty sure. What do you think? I think we made oh, a decision no. here. Speed, flight. 80 feet. See? Oh. 80 feet. I was right. Nice. Does it have a separate initiative to me? It no. goes I under your normally control. say, normally you, it's under your control. Cool. Because you summon it as your action. You're so like, fly! Right! And it can dash. <laughs> so you can, can go dash. 160 feet. Because I have fleet of foot, and I was wondering if I could then summon it after that point to then take me even further, or is that just dumb? It, it would be smarter for you to summon it, get on it, bonus action, and then move action. Dash. Okay, uh, in that case. 
you appear on it, it kind of summons underneath you, Sweet. and you just force it to go, and you actually get further than you two. You're 160 feet. <laughs> only by um, 10 feet. But only by 10 feet. Okay. Also, actually, in my final 10 feet, could I oh, grab Juto? Huh? In my final 10 feet, could I... Yes, you can kind of grab her with the Griffin's claws, yeah. Griffin can grab her if she want, if he wants. Um, no! <laughs> <laughs> just getting clawed by a metal Man. bird. It's fine. Yeah, it's just going to tail attack bloody thingy again. Hits. Thingy. Oh, swear Thingy's a hero. <laughs> he is a hero. I wasted a level six spell on that bastard. <laughs> no, if you had really fought it and killed the dragon, he'd still be alive. I'm joking. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, you can just see the, the tail is like smashing into Sphera's back. You can hear it kind of snapping bones, but Sphera's just like, and, like holding is it as desperately still as got he it? can. Uh, currently, yeah, it's not had a chance to escape yet. Hot damn. Um, Cam Buckland. Let's go up fucking dash for the tree line, because I guess we are... You're basically there, you're 30 feet. Yeah, we're there. You can help, you and Elora together can just move up the last 30 feet. You can drag her. Yeah. Unless you want to cast a spell. I'm going to cast... Should have faith in myself. Should have faith bone section. Sure. Um, Sferia on his turn, whilst he has it grappled, he does try punching it as much as he can. Oh, Sferia. Um, we didn't deserve you. Uh, this time he actually hits. We suck. Yeah. I don't think we suck. I mean, this is like a, a giant dragon. Yeah. I mean, what are we going to do? Bargain with it? Fight it? Uh, run away, use clever magic spells to make it do what you want. I don't know. I don't know what you guys can do. Uh, Sphere just like punches it a couple of times, just like Rah! as he's like wrestling with it. Um, Elora, you're going. Flania. Just gonna be Move by up. the tree. And and are you just gonna ready to. As soon as these guys are within range for me to do it and get them through, then I will do the spell. But not and, you, until. and where are you gonna go with the spell? Are you going to cast spell? spell. Okay. Our little hub tree. Okay. Hub tree. The most important round, the dragon's round, as it tries to break free. Of the grapple. Right. Can it like know. accidentally fall over and snap its neck? Snap its neck. Snap its neck. Oh no, that's a bad face. Mm. That was a natural one for Seria. Oh dear. Sferi <laughs> <laughs> is literally, his arms are like knocked out to the side as the dragon beats its wings. It is slowed down because it was technically prone, um, which means it can only move like 40 feet. Um, oh. So, you guys are quite far ahead at 160 feet. It kind of like turns to you, sees you running away, looks at Sphere, growls, doesn't regain its lightning breath, which is very important for you two. Mm -hmm. um, instead, it will move up as far as it can, which is 40 feet, and then it will take the dash action. Um, and that's it. It's basically on you, however. It's like flying next to the bronze griffin. Oh, um, but that's the end of its turn, yeah. Juto. Put me down, bitch. Well, no, can can if she's on the Griffin, she can choose not she to could, be. No, but could she choose to will the Griffin on her turn as well as? No, it's currently Reynard's control. Reynard only. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, you could. Yeah, I suppose you could have. I guess I reached a hand out to you, and you could have chosen to accept or yeah. decline that. So. Well, is that what you did? What did you do? Well, what we, would Juto have done? Juto could have resisted Gone being on around. Yeah, if you, yeah. Just, well, if you yeah. don't want to be on the Griffin, you don't want to be on the Griffin. Yeah. Yeah. No. So it's your turn. Trying to help. I don't want to get stuck in this situation where we're running. 15. Also, I'm invisible. You wouldn't have seen me, I'm invisible. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have picked yeah. up on okay. Don't worry. I'm, I'm invisible, invisible so yeah. You what could you have, have just said, do? I don't want to go on the Griffin. <laughs> I'm invisible, shut up. Right. You can't see me. I am John Cena. I'm gonna keep running. Okay, so you're um, just doing the same thing, keep point. Yeah, but can I do patient defense? Is there any point? You can, but you'd only go 100 feet if you do that. Mm. Yeah, fuck that. Nice so twice. 150, whoosh, fly forwards. Is that, a, that, and that's a key point for to, step the wind? Step the wind every time. How close is she? They are now, she is now 300 feet uh, from where she was, so she's 200 feet away. Okay. No, 300 feet away, she's okay. 600 feet. So Reynard. Reynard. Same thing. So this, Dragon, it's a big boy. It's large, it's yeah. huge. Um, would you say that the bronze griffin is nimbler? Like, if it was to take sharper turns, if it was to whatever, like... Maybe, it's difficult to tell. You don't know griffins as well. In that case... It looks a bit more agile just because of its size. Yeah, because it is much smaller, like, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, 
I want to uh, start flying almost not vertically, but like upwards a lot more than I necessarily would have done. That'll cut your, your forward distance, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Have you got a better idea? No, I mean, I'm just <laughs> saying, I'm just letting you know what will happen. Like. Okay, I want to, yeah, start flying upwards, and I guess it will follow me, because it's yeah, right yeah. behind me. Yeah. Um, and I'm also going to shoot at it twice. Okay, so uh, that's, you can't dash, so you only go 80 feet, you go 70 uh, I can, feet forward. I can dash as a bonus sure action. Fun? You can dash as a bonus action, the griffin can't. Does it not matter if I'm... Um, it, it doesn't use your special yeah. abilities. You're basically, yeah. on your turn, you're going action, or you're going move. You move for me, Griffin, as my action. Dash for me, Griffin. But it doesn't have your special training to be able to do your bonus action movements. All right, I want to keep flying, and I want to just go upwards more up, up, than necessarily about, before. You make like 20 feet, so you're about 140 feet forward, so... Okay. okay. Um, oh, it is probably going to... Mmm, stop flying away. Doesn't like you flying away. I like flying away. Mm, I can move up to half its flying speed. It doesn't hit anybody with its wing attack, but it will basically move half of its movement speed, so it's slowly catching up. Uh, Cam Buckland. Cam Buckland's going to say to Laura, how big can you make this tree bottle? Uh, why? We chase the dragon in, we lure it to somewhere completely different, but we don't mm. go in. It's it's not big enough for him. Right. It's a human. And that's about six seconds. It's a human, right? Right? Yeah. Is it's, it? it's five feet tall. It's, it's a yeah, it's like opening. for a humanoid, it's not going to fit him through. What are you doing, Cam? I'm going to see where the guys are, how far away to, from me right now. Five, 300 feet. 300 feet. 300 feet away still. I'm going to summon a Guardian of Faith. <laughs> Next to the portal. Mm-hmm. And that's the one that deals 20 radiant damage, right? Yeah, if it comes near. As soon as it comes okay. in. Okay, cool. That's your action. Sverier will run off and he's going to throw a rock. Misses. Big rock let's climb past. Uh, Elora. How far is the dragon from us then? So, if from you guys, they're... it was on top of them, then it moved half its movement, which is 40. So, it's actually now, they were going at 100. So it's about 100 feet away from Reynard. So 400 f- feet away from us then. Yes, from you two, yeah. Right. I will not be doing anything then. Okay. Unfortunately, it's too far. Lightning still doesn't return to its mouth. <laughs> um, uh, it will, this time, it can get within 20 feet. I don't know what else I 20 can feet, do. can't really do that much. Long it's just going to have to dash again. Because it can't actually reach you, but this time it actually flies past Reynard. It actually manages to go about 60 feet in front of you, like in your trajectory, and it kind of whips its head around. So I was heading upwards, so it's above me. It's kind of like flying. Yeah, it's basically, well, it would probably fly next to you and then just stay there. It's going to probably fly just just in front of you. It's like, whoosh, it rises up in front of you, like, whoosh. Okay. Nowhere to run, Griffin Rider. Um, Juto. Can I keep going? Mm. You gotta decide. Yep. Just gonna keep going. So you are now 50 feet away from these two. How big is the thing? I know, 150 feet. Width. Why? Like large? Like bigger than five feet opening? Right. <laughs> it can eat a person whole, so it's probably got a larger mouth okay. span. Uh, Reynard. So how many, I suppose I spoke to Laura about the very specifics of the Bronze Griffin. How many times can I decast it, resummon it? As many, many as, many you, as want. you want. In that case... But I don't know, is it an action to do that? I don't know. How, why? I don't know if it counts as a bonus or an action. It was never, I don't really have a... That's okay, I can do this in two separate turns, I think. And I might use my actions to shoot, that's for sure. Um, so I, I have a can I situation. Oh dear. <laughs> Can I? Um, Use an action to speak the command word. Action. So it's a full action. Okay. Um, how high above the ground are we? You are currently 100 feet. So if oh I God. was to push myself mm-hmm. off the bronze griffin so that I am not going up anymore, I'm now going down mm-hmm. and de summon it. Mm-hmm. 
would I hit the ground in time? Yes. I would. Yes. By next turn. Yes. You I got falling like rules round long last. I got falling rules wrong when we did Grey Bell. You fall at 500 feet in a single round. So Whoa. you'd hit the ground and splat. Yes. It's then you build slow, up though. momentum first. Not really. d d doesn't have yeah. rules for like that. It's just that is terminal velocity. Like you, that is the full speed you would go at. Like because <laughs> <just, laughs> no. just... it's six seconds. It's like you know you count six seconds how far you'd fall. Apparently I mean, that's I'm... 500 feet. The only thing is that I'm going upwards at the moment. If I didn't push off it, if I'm going upwards at however fast I was going upwards, I de-summon that, I'm going to be going upwards for that time, and then back down. Like, is that, no? What? I mean, you reach like your peak, I have, I, I'm have. i still going drop. upwards, yes. and then I slowly start to then start to fall down. Like, it's not like I get off the Bronze Griffin and there's 100 feet or 500 feet. Let me put it this way. You will hit the ground at the beginning of your next turn. You would splat. There is no way that you cannot splat. You would basically. not have enough time to pull you out the bronze griffin it. and summon it again before you hit the ground. Excellent. Even if you have that slow, like, whoa, what and you just. I used the movement first and then did that. <laughs> you would still hit the ground. I'd still hit the ground. 500 it. feet. You fall 500 still feet. Still hit the ground. Just um, no poppins at y'all. What are you doing? Because you're probably going to be the last one before we finish. Okay, I want to uh, uh, just dash the griffin just as far as I can go. I'm going to re-angle my trajectory so I'm not going into it. Okay. Along the ground. As you move away from it, it does get an attack of opportunity. Well, as it gets an um, attack of opportunity, um, um. it's got disadvantage. It does have disadvantage. Does a 17 hit you? Yeah. You have a lower AC than me. What? Don't me. It needs a 11 points. Um. Oh. Oh. It's normally because it normally gets to make like three attacks. So oh, I see. Um, it's only just getting that one of the opportunity. Okay. At the end of your turn, well, you move 80 feet, he 160 moves, feet 160 away. Feet, yeah. mm. Stop running away! So is Reynard now 150 feet away? How? How? I'm 150. So he, he's basically She's 120. He's away. 200 away because you're at 400 now. Oh. Because yeah. uh, you went up. Oh, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So, at the end of its turn, it will move half of its movement speed forward. Oh no, it can't do that. So, we'll wrap this up with, that's it, because we've only got 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> I mean... I have to keep this here. Um, as you make a desperate escape yeah. from the blue dragon. We're going to need to write down very specifically yeah, where we all are, I think. I'll we? write that down. <laughs> I'll write that down. If I you guys it. can read the donations, I'll write it down. 150 okay. foot away from tree line, air stance. Ooh. Oh! Ooh. I tried to say we just go back to Towers of Hall. We don't need to worry about these nerds. <laughs> I said that too, but. For, fine. Still, That's not now. the situation we're in now, so. <laughs> dealing with running away from a dragon. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. <laughs> Definitely did not. Shall we. Um, donations! If you guys can do donations while I do this, yeah. Oh, please. Thank I'm you dead. for watching, everybody. I'm so dead. Good. Oh. I mean, I think like at this point, the dragon's getting so frustrated at chasing you around, it's probably going to change what it's doing next turn. Oh, It'll cool. probably go like, "Fuck you," and just fly for the people like that you're heading towards. I think. Uh, oh, right, thanks. Okay. Fair enough. That music, Steve. <laughs> that music. Bum 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 bum. Night chart donates with a love heart. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dash Rocks donated. Thank you all for the stream. Finally caught up last session. First one live. Can't wait to see you all at Insomnia. Nice. nice. Shout out to Jake, who also is a massive fan. Hello, Woo, Jake. Jake. Hi, Jake. Ola Rem, thank you for donating. Thank you very and much. And Zuran. Shunan. Or Shunan donated. I don't know how to start this message except thank you so much for all the fun over the past year. Sadly, my father passed away not too long ago. Oh, shit. Sorry to hear that. Sorry so, the only thing I've been looking forward to is HR. Thank you all again for all the fun and let's have a good one. Aww. Thank you very much. All the best. Florent10 donated. Just popping in to say hi for the first time in a while. I'm not going to be able to watch live tonight because we're a tough exams week. I have four out of five exams in the same week. Two of them in the same uh, day. Good, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Because I'm sure we're going to need it. Good luck. Good to luck. You. Luck. Uh, Frank the NPC has donated. Hey, I have been needing a hoodie, so thanks. Sweet. You can grab it on sword.yosgas.com. They didn't say that, but <laughs> good luck today, guys. I am yeah. sad the story is wrapping up, but looking forward to the future. If there is one. 
Yeah. <laughs> the one. It's the one without Raynard. Why are you guys being so sad? That's true. That's a bright... Wait, hang on, no, I should Steve? I'm going to go to the next... You guys want to... We've done that one. one? Yeah, I've done that one. Uh, Grinzy Cat has donated, saying, have a little donation in honour of the Noble Nightingale. <laughs> 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 Can't watch live, but we'll catch the VOD later. Thank you. Ron Rapara has donated, saying, Can't watch live this week. Need to finish my Spelljammer conversions before it gets any later. Luck of Tamura, be with your dice friends. As a DM, I give mm. you all inspiration. That doesn't count. Thanks, oh, Mark. shit. Whoa! Oh, 150 Whoa. bucks! What? Thank you very much. Under. 100 and a half. From Nixter123456. Hi, I love you guys. For Mark, if there is a lightborn, does that mean there is a darkborn? Because light cannot exist without darkness. I'm sure light can exist without darkness because light is a form of energy. I don't think it matters if there is an absence They're of light. They're asking if there's another cool thing. <laughs> no, there's no, no darkborn. No cool thing. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no cool thing. Uh, the Grey Mix has donated it can be in saying. Your world. First time I'm able to watch a high roller stream from start to finish. Also, can't wait till Grunka finds out Reynard let another woman touch his crotch. I didn't let it happen. Yeah, it it was happen. involuntary. It just yeah. did happen. That happened a lot with Reynard. Do you want to take over? Sure. Uh, not totally Tara. No, not, not totally Tara. Not totally Tara, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> not totally Tara. Uh, I'm a broke college kid, but had to donate before the campaign ends. My closest friend committed suicide oh, last year God. with other fortunate, unfortunate events following, and I want to give back to you what little I can because, oh my fucksies, I love you so much. I'm really sorry to hear that. Thank, you. Thank you very much for your donation. Um, Sinner has donated with no message. Thank you very much. Uh, Dark Day 41. Now that Rennie has found himself a ghostwriter, what can we expect? Uh, the when collected, can we expect? Uh, when can we expect the collected tales of, uh, and adventures of Reynard Farahorn to be published? Soon. Soon. You can buy it on store.yogscast.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh my um, god. Laura Sevy, uh, haven't watched live in weeks, so I was pretty excited to have the day off. You guys make me and this community incredibly happy, and I would personally like to say thank you. Well, thank you very thank much. You, thank you. To you too. Also, Mark, you're an awesome, awesome DM. Thank you for creating this world. My pleasure. You're welcome. You Kim, Kim, would you like to carry on? <laughs> Sefi1126 donated. Hey guys, spent the day doing outdoorsy stuff and made it back home in time, Ew, just outdoors. somewhat, uh, in time to catch the stream. I just wanted to say the whole Greybell arc was amazing, Mark. Have some celebratory money because I just finished my college Wee. exams last Aww, week. Don't Woo, don't congratulations. Just like me. Everybody made it a good arc. It wasn't just me. Uh, singing Art Bird has donated. Hey, hi rollers! First time donating, and I just want to thank you all for over six months of binging and for the amazing characters and stories. Two questions: Will the Hi Rollers I sixty two live show be live streamed, and what has been your favorite arc? I don't think will it'll be not live be live streamed. I'm not making any promises on it. We're going to try and record it, mm. but I'm making no promises in case on so the day tech stuff doesn't you work. You want to see try. it? Come and see it. Please Get a ticket. ticket if you can. If, you can, if you're in America, I'm sorry, or Australia, yeah. I'm sorry, or anywhere else that's not in England. Yeah. Man, but we will do our best to we'll record best. it and yeah. then play it. Best it, it, it might be like, a, if it gets recorded, it'll be a later release type thing. We'll I see what, what's going to happen. Best arc is Cam Buckland arc. I did really like Cam Winter Spy. The Grey Bell arc was very fun. But the next fun. one's going to be like, the best no. by far. <laughs> don't like any of them. Hate the whole campaign. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, quite, I quite like the bit where um, we, I talked us into joining Broken Sky. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, and yeah. I was just that like, was was the good what one. Is it? <laughs> and then the core <laughs> core the turned up, and I was like, <laughs> murder. <laughs> yeah, that so, yeah, was pretty good. That was, that was early on. Fun. Yeah, really early. Haven't liked anything since. Uh, Calva <laughs> gets wow. donated. Wow. It's not enough about you, <laughs> <laughs> Sunday evening. High rollers, Chinese food, and D&D prep against the horrors of Monday morning. Mm. Loving the story in RP, and thanks for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Quigs45. Hey, guys. I managed to pry my hungover ass to my desk so I didn't miss the glorious awkwardness that is Nalistri. Loving the stream thus far. Ship helping it. me not feeling just quite as shit. Thanks. No. Nice. Over to you, Mark. I think that was a satisfying release. Varys. Allura. Mm. Just a quick okay. donation to my favorite group on the whole internet. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Varys. Dinny Dorf. Yeah, uh, can't wait. Can't watch live. <laughs> just seen what's coming up. But <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> can't watch live. But I'll catch up on the vod tomorrow. Right now, I'm organising a big charity D and D game for work. Six DMs, thirty players, lots of drinks, and it's all for the kids. Whoa, ah, well. Thirty players. Back up to yeah, Six DMs though. Wow. Wish us luck. Okay. That's still, that's still much. Hang on, I can. 
That's a I lot think of very much. Okay. Nightingale, let me see if I get Wait. this right. Yeah. I can do this one. Wait. What? Right into your, right into your mic. <laughs> That's the message. That is quite literally the message. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, from Kingdom Come Deliverance, I'm told. I yes. want to go uh, NASA, nasal tree. Oh, I thought I said NASA. NASA. I thought I said that NASA with an exclamation mark. NASA. Nasal tree. Tree. How we missed you. Also, the hoodie is very warm and currently my favourite. It's my favourite too, Dabbadees. It can be it your favourite at store.yourscast.com. <laughs> we Lord's house. Proud DM father, aka Dungeon Daddy. At least this campaign does not have that many daddy issues. Yeah, hopefully. Um, and then Sifi, second donation because OMG, that Elora in the least we've seen was too cute! Pretty cute. Then we almost died. Yeah. That wasn't cute. Go on, um, Trot. Um, we've read that. Top Meta one. Manu donated saying, Tiny Clap. Tiny Clap. I think we're at that point now. Thank Meta you, Manu. Meta. Uh, also donated saying, okay, and at least we solved the sea problem with his ice hand. I didn't see that coming and it was great. And then a cute yeah. moment, everyone's reaction was amazing. And now a fucking blue dragon! The hell? What a roller coaster! It's I know. Been a roller coaster. Ups and downs today. Yeah. Uh, really wish donated. I had that ever seed. I could have offered it to the dragon and then he turns into stone! Ha <laughs> ha! Not wood. How. Why do Mark? Aru, the best big doggo. Aru, the bork bork. <laughs> I'm oh. children. He was a goodest boy. Messed up Murphy Markisms donated. Surprised that the Dungeon Daddy didn't slip up this time. Good yes, work. Yes, he did. It's not all the time. Yes, he did. I can't wait for yes, the next stream of health scoop and relations. Scoop. <laughs> First trotism, yay. Scoop that big knowledge. Ace of Thorns donated. Dragon! Yep, dragon. Oh, what? Look. A 51 month oh, present what? bracing myself for craziness. Go team! Which still doesn't have a name, you know. <laughs> Don't need a team name, because they're all dead anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Britturion donated saying, hey, first time donating, keep up the amazing job. What's the sweet songs at the beginning and end of the videos other than the good old Grass is Green and the great official soundtrack? They are epidemic sounds. I think like, any music that's sounds. not on the soundtracks so. or Grass is Green is epidemic. But, is oh, great. that's um, Battle Bard. Is it Battle Bards? Uh, is it? Uh, the so Grass is Green stuff? one is. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but it's not other that. than. Yeah. Not, oh, yeah, epidemic, epidemic sounds. Um, mess up Murphy Mark is on the to say, never mind Dungeon Daddy, scoop up the squeeze clop. <laughs> <laughs> that says, scoop up the squeeze clop. That's so good. Uh, last up, Radish is donated saying, clop. brave high rollers ran away, bravely ran away, away. When danger reared its ugly head, bravely turned their tails and fled. Yes, yeah. we did. Woo! No shame. Uh, a little bit of shame. It's a dragon. dragon. <laughs> it's a huge dragon. Zephyr One donated saying, thanks for another obviously great episode, guys. I rate great out of eight. Hooray for <laughs> sailed ships, hooray for high rollers. Now we just need a man or woman for Juto. Today's super duper wowie, that's cool question. Your favorite game at the moment? None. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! 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 Fuck's sake. Mario Odyssey. Thank you. And Monster Hunter. Uh, Dancing on Fire. Um, almost forgot to donate this week. Too caught up with everything happening. I'm surprised you guys didn't fight the dragon at your level personally, but I can understand it. It's got to be like a level 50 dragon or something. It's crazy. It's not. It's like a level 50. I think that I would just put you against like yes. something which isn't within your challenge rating of threshold. It is a tough encounter, I it's will not lie. You did like 66 damage. And yes. That was average. We fought it, yep. and then I feel like we could have killed it, I was just, but then I, I almost got killed in one round. Yeah, he yeah. almost got killed in one hit. So that, was, my, that was Cam's well. reaction as an RP thing. Yeah, but I have evasion. Chat. Uh, <laughs> Shall I read this one? Yes. Yes. Awkward Dog Boner. This week's Boner Rating. Dungeon Daddy out of 20. <laughs> Juto, just fuck the blue <laughs> dragon and scoop up the ski slope. <laughs> Raging hard on moment. <laughs> And at least we can fill Alora in with his last slot of power. <laughs> Erection rejection moment. At least Sveria dies with the family. Bone on Sunda. That's a good one. That's a fucking good one. Shoot up the ski slope. Scoop up. Just fuck the scoop up. <laughs> Just fuck the dragon. <laughs> I think that scoop one got the, the kid. Ski slope. Well, thank you all so much for watching today. We will resume next week with a dragon fight. Yeah. Next week on Sunday. Yeah. I might have a map ready. Oh. Lovely. Why? Nice, nice We're just running. And we'll see you bye. next Sunday. Bye. See bye. you later. Bye. 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 bye.